Welcome to Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Hey, I'm the old guy along with Corey Nealon and Ryan Osborne. We are happy to bring you the second of two semifinal games today in the Southern section. Earlier today, Riverside took care of business and beat Ventura College. And now it's up to Fullerton to do their bid over Saddleback here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So we'll see what can happen. Corey Nalen, Fullerton deferred. They're gonna kick off to start this first half. And boy, howdy, trying to get this as low as Greg Krause is sort of tough out here. Saddleback's gonna get it first. We'll see what happens in this game. Kickoff, Tommy Hawkins and, and Tommy Oriaro is going to be back deep for the Mounties of Saddleback. Four and one in conference, nine and one overall. The Hornets, five and zero oh in conference, nine and one overall. Number two versus number three. Number two is to the left on your screen. Number three on the right of your screen in white and maroon. Let's get ready for semifinal football in the CCCAA. Fumbled at the five. Gonna be down at the 10. So it'll be first down and 10 at the 10 yard line for Mount Sac. And the Hornets come out with the starting defensive lineup. Amari Williams, Bryce Dunnock, Ant Harris, and Eric Hill. Up front, linebackers in the middle is Chris Harn. Marcellus Gaines on the far side, side, near side, strong side, Cody, Jeremiah McNeely. Cornerback on the near side, number eight, Max Ahoya. Far side, Casias Kearns. And the safeties, number 25 and number four, Sadari Kearns and Salem Streeter, respectively. Aiku Dengbu comes out the third, comes out a quarterback for Mount Sac. 62% per throwing the ball this year, 2,109 yards. Big Mo gets the ball on the first carry and gets a gain of 10 on the play. Oh, that was Isaiah Dickerson? Yep. Isaiah Dickerson out there. So Isaiah Dickerson gets nine on the first carry. Dickerson, Dickerson stays carry. out there. Stopped by Jeremiah McNeely. Run it again with him. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Should be a gain of nothing. It'll be third down and one. Good stuff by Ant Harris. Isaiah Dickerson running up the middle. Stopped by a swarm of Hornets. Harris did a nice job, number 92 in gray. The offensive line center is Dominic Reyes for the Mounties. Left guard is Jaden Colvin. Right guard, Jal Chan. The left tackle is Daniel Gonzalez. And the right tackle is Dalen Matoyer. Lucas Moore comes out from the near side with Judah and Zenwa. With Dingwu at quarterback. Looks things over, third down and one. Straight dive play again. Should have enough for a first down. Corey Nalen's going to say no. I'm going to say they've got it. Corey, you don't think they do. They uh -huh. got it marked at the 20 on one side and the 20 and the half on the other side. Either way, it's short. They needed the 21, 21 and a half. It's fourth down and short. So they're going to punt it away early in this game no for game Saddleback. Stop by Jeremiah McNeely Jordan, and Eric Hill. Jordan Smith back deep. For the Hornets, Smith will stand at the 40. End over end. Smith was going to come up to get it. Takes a bounce and gets down right at the 43. So with 13-12 to go, just starting off this game, the Hornets get their first chance. We'll see who comes out offensively for your Fuller College Hornets. And of course, Garrett is finally saying, where are you going to mark it at? They're going to mark it at the 43. They're going to say right on the hash mark. So they're going to bring it to the near Hornets hash the mark. Drive at the 43 yard line. First and 10, Hornets. Josh Calvin comes out at quarterback. Gibson to the near side of the field. Koenig in the slot on the far side of the field. First down and 10. Right at the 43. Josh Calvin goes back. Looked for the middle of the field. Aiden was there, 
taken away, incomplete pass. Covered so, by Caton Supernot. So Supernot on the coverage up front is going to be Daniel Tupeloa, Dupre Mendoza, Jacob Gaskin. Second down and 10. Calvin looks over. Smith to the near side of the field. Gibson to the far side of the field. Koenig in the slot. Second down and 10 at the 43 for the Hornets. Koenig gets in motion. Give it straight up the middle. Tyrell Green gets up to the 45. Should be a gain of two on the play. Tupuola with the stop up front. Player with the helmet all has to go out is Joshua Taylor, the starting linebacker. In for him is Tuale LaFau in that secondary. Watch out for number one, Mason White. Maloa Wells, all, both all conference. Anthony Hebert, Aaron Smith also in the secondary. CJ Broy now in the game. Third down and eight. Calvin's got time, rolls away from the pressure, can't beat him in the corner, drops the ball himself and falls on it, a loss of 14 on the play. He had nowhere to go anyway. Good coverage by that secondary. This is the best defense, at least statistically, in the state. It might be the best defense we've Sack seen all season Darius long. Eves. Marcel Logan comes out for the Mounties. Logan walks up to the 35. On fourth and 24, Hornets Luke Mamata punting. So Logan looking to make the return. Neither team can do anything to start things off. Heavy air tonight. Logan backpedals. Taking it to 28, dances, and is down right there. And that was actually Jaden Allen back there. I thought it was Logan, but it was Jaden Allen who went back for the ball. A second teamer. Jaden Allen, the punt returner. Returner. From the Central Division. Sam, so teach me not to look at you, Corey, and go, wait a minute, is that, is that who I think it is? And have you go, old guy, here, let me help you out a little. So about what you expected for the first drives of this game for both teams, Fullerton came out. I really like that first play of the game, the Koenig, that's something they can exploit. A little, a little uh, surprise Dickerson stays in. Try to run a jet sweep, it goes no player with Lucas Moore. Back to the line of scrimmage. Corey, are you surprised that they haven't bring their Michael big back out yet? More. No, this is what they do. Nyanga Mokenga, he line. does come Jeremiah in, but Dickerson Davis. has gotten a majority of the starts this season. They run both of them, and they're both effective. Potts to the far side of the field. St. Julian to the near side of the field. Ugengu goes back. He's going to take it himself. Rolls out. Throws for the middle of the feet. Throws where nobody's at. It's gonna bring up a second down and 10. Good coverage by the defense. Yeah, Dangwu is one of those guys who he can, he can move, but he doesn't really want to run unless he absolutely has to. Mike Dangwu the third at quarterback. Jay Nallen Noah goes into the slot on the far side of the field. Lucas Moore in the slot on the near side of the field. St. Julian to the near side to the cameras. Dengu looks for a snap. Third down. We're going to get a flag, and it's going to stop right there. Premature jump by M Lucas Moore in the slot. Yeah, Isaiah Dickerson as well. They had oh, two. Number seven. Offense. We're going to have, third down. We're gonna have to fix that. Yeah, we're going to have to. You know, it's not that your hearing's really good. That we just have the audio turned up loud. So they take Lucas Moore and they go to the far side of the field. Tremont Brewer, the Slider lone receiver. Then they come back over here with St. Julian. Dengwu gonna take it himself. Needs 13, they have to make a tackle on him. They do, it's gonna be short of a first down. So we'll see if the Mounties come out at the 42 and punt it away. Keeper, Good play call, because it's close enough that you're gonna go for it. Here in a fourth down and two. You got to think they're going to go for it here. They look like they're staying on the field. The Dengwu, the third, stays on the field. Fourth and one. Allen, the up back, 
Now they quickly get Brewer in the slot. We're gonna get timeout Fuller. It's a little confusion defensively, wow. Corey, as it was a set that they looked like they hadn't seen on film yet in the game. We're at TFA. So fourth down and a solid yard for the Mounties. Now they go back in punt formation. And I think smart move on their part, Corey, they don't want to give Fullerton a cheap score. Signal for a fair catch, gone down and got it right at the 22. So playing field position to start this game off. The Mounties zero, the Hornets zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And they got D'Aquila, one of the best kickers in the state. And he's a first team all conference in that central division, national central division. And the Hornets come out on the offensive line. The center is a first teamer, Will Peroni, on that left side on the tackle. They hand it off to Tyler Green, the green machine, gets a gain of three on that carry with 12, 10, 11 to go in this first quarter. They stuck with the run Where's against the Golden Green. West College, even Lee. though it was just small runs like that, which helped Fullerton then have a chance on the pass plays. Second down and seven, right across the 25. Calvin looks things over. Mounties come back up, four down linemen, Quick snap, Green gets it again. Cal Tyrell Green up the middle, gets knocked off his feet all the way out to the 45. Lance Russell brings him down at the 45-yard line, but again, that's a 17-yard run, excuse me, a 21-yard run. Knocked down by number 22, Mountie Lance Russell. And that's a good work behind Will Peroni, Daniel Modellis on that left side. Gibson comes to the near side. Koenig in the slot next to him. Green still in the backfield. First down and 10. Josh Calvin pump fakes. Goes down the middle of the field. And the receiver lost his footing on the cut. Incomplete pass. And he had him. I mean, that was one of those where if Jordan Smith can stay on his feet, he had the cut on Wells. And who knows what could have happened. But good look. Good offense here by Fullerton trying to change it up. C.J. Broy, near side of the field, Smith next to him, Koenig in the slot. Tyrell Green still there, second down and 10 at the 47. Smith goes in motion and stops. They hand it off to Tyrell, gets hit at the line of scrimmage, gets a gain of one on the play. Initially, Jacob Gaskin was there, but he bounced off as he does many, many times as Tupuola is in there for the stop along with Super Nantes. Second team all conference. Tupola is a first Tupola. team conference player. Gibson at the far side of the field. Third down and a long nine for the Hornets. Calvin rolls away from pressure, steps up, cuts back in the middle. He's got to stay in his feet. Gets hit at the 44 and is short on the play. And that's Lakehi who makes the stop. Ghana Tatafu is his Calvin first name, himself. introduced himself to Josh Michigan Calvin there. And look, Mark, it looked like Calvin was gonna get that first down, but the close. Jaden Allen comes in. Allen will stand at the 10. Put it in the air for the Hornets. Fourth Luke down and four, right across midfield for, for Fullerton. Back and forth to start this first quarter. Low snap. Allen will signal for a fair catch. We'll look at it bounce. It will roll and die at the five yard line. So a 47 yard kick from the all conference punter, Luke Mamana. Wait a minute, is everybody all conference in the, on this team or what? Well, pretty much, yeah. Or is this Corey Nealon picks? No, this was one of my picks, but again, they did make all conference. I was wrong on the uh, defensive player of the year. I just wanted to make sure. In the slot is going to be Potts. Outside of him in the slot is going to be St. Julian. Dengbu, the quarterback. Off left tackle, gain of about, I'm gonna give him about two and a half on the run. We're at 741 in the first quarter. Adrian Boyd running, LeBaron Kennedy Jr., number 50 in the gray jersey. Mount Zach Ball carrier, number 29. 
Aaron Boyd. So Boyd in the game now. Boyd averaging about 23 yards a game. Handed off to Boyd again, looking to go to the outside. Gets just short of the 15. They're going to mark him at the 14. It's going to bring up a third down and a long three. And that's a good run around the right side. Uh, Kahekil Cotret, who's in there at the right the tackle, turns. pulled, leading the way for Boyd. Nine yards to two Going to hand it off to Boyd one more time. Boyd gets hit at the line of scrimmage. Boy, and on, they're going to mark it at the line. Oh, no, he's short. Yeah, he's short. The one on the far side gave him a great spot. The one on this side said, no, he never made the line. And it's going to bring up a fourth down yeah, and one. No, they're going to they're they're give him the first the down on that. They are going to give him the first. Oh, they did? They yeah. gave it the far spot, not the near spot then, Ryan, because the near spot had him short. So the far side gives him the first down. Brewer comes out wide. Empty backfield. Boyd now gets it, gets taken down and dropped for a loss as they try to come back away and they get a lot of about seven on the play. And here's the problem with that play. When he brought him down, he came on his gut and didn't actually hit the knee unless we have, unless we're missing it up from up here, but he tried to regain his balance at the three and fell. That's where the ball we think should be spot. But again, it's a loss. Junior Kennedy makes the stop. Aiku Dingwu, the third, can run the football too. So you got to watch him on one of those where he puts it in somebody's belly, takes it out, and takes off running. Second down and 17 for the Mounties going backwards. Dingwu goes back across the middle of the field. Threads the needle. Got to be able to tackle somebody when they catch the foot, but they finally do, but that's going to be a first down. And you want the official to eventually blow the whistle so somebody doesn't get hurt. And that's their best receiver is Jaden Allen. He was called conference in the Central League. You get those pass complete to Jaden Allen. And he's one of the best the the receivers Stop in the CFA. And that's one they got to get. Allen averages 62 yards a game, comes over in the slot, the near side. Once again, next to him is Brewer. Gangwu goes back over to him. Brewer's got to make it. They get him down on the initial first hit. Yeah, that's Max Ahoya. They're feeling good right now, but again, third down and, or excuse me, second down and 17. You got to come up with that play. What a good Jay play Allen. by Ahoya. Tackled by Maximus Ahoya. He's also an all-conference performer, Mark. Boyd stays in the back bell. Ike Udengwu, the third at quarterback. Has time, throws it over. Throws it to Brewer. Brewer breaks the tackle. There's a flag on the play. Brewer down the field. Stays on his feet. Should be touchdown Mounties. If it's not coming back. It's coming back illegal shift. Possibly on the Mounties, but a great play and run after by Tremont Brewer. Live on the 26 yard line. And you can't discuss this and then say it's getting picked up. We have an ineligible player downfield. Number 11 was covered up at the line of Illegal scrimmage. lineman till the lineman five went five range, yards down, down the field before the ball was thrown. Therefore, it's illegal. It's basically like an illegal shift too, Corey. Yeah, you're tied in. He said the tight end was covered up, then went down the field. That's it. Willerton lucked out. Yeah. Takes seven off the board with 4.08 to go here in the first quarter. Big break for the Hornets. And on that penalty, basically a 70-yard penalty against the Mounties. Xavier Rawls now here on the near side of the field. Dengu trying to get him to hike the ball. Rawls, a new receiver. They'll come in and out. Dengu goes back, throws it over in the flat, taken there quickly by Moore. Moore sheds a tackle. 
and gets taken out, personal foul against the Hornets. And that's one of those where we, that's one of those where we talked about the sure tackling of Fullerton all season long, yet on this drive, you've seen a couple missed tackles resulting in big plays. He picks up the first tier, and there's going to be 15 more coming. Lucas Moore push out now by Keon Marshall. So it should be a personal foul the way we see it against the Hornets. Should be a first down anyway. I thought he had it. Dead ball. Dead ball personal. personal foul. There it is. Leg it out of bounds. Number 57 of the defense. 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. So that's going to move it across midfield right at the 48 yard line. First down for the Mounties. Rawls to the near side of the field, in the slot next to him. Tommy Oyaro. Udengbu, the third at quarterback. Try to run it, ball comes out. Hornets say they have it. And, was and that, they do. And was that Carlo Torres who forced a fumble? I couldn't see if that was Torres or if that was Dunnick, but Kadari Kearns, no, Branson Tita Noir comes Bradley up with the fumble Bradley recovery. Bradley so Boyd got hit, Corey, loses the ball. The Hornets come up with it. Ryan Osborne said two turnovers tonight for the Hornet defense, that's one. Ray, Big Ray said, you know what, if they would just tackle instead of just trying to knock somebody down, they'd probably do better. Well, Big Ray, they made a tackle and force the turnover. Brandon Nunez comes in as quarterback. At midfield, 3.47 to go, Big Ray. No donuts, no score yet. A couple donuts on the scoreboard, none in the booth. Nunez goes back, has a chance. Middle of the field, throws it to Koenig. Stays on his feet at the 20, at the 10. Touchdown, Hornets! Aiden Koenig, uh, excuse me guys, somebody in the classroom said Aiden was gonna be a big player out there. Just wanna brush my fingertips off to say, hey. That was everybody, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> 50 yards, one play, and that's been his specialty. It's amazing, he was only second team all conference. I couldn't understand that. When he should have been first team. And Ryan Osborne, one of the few guys that is not afraid to go over the middle as a receiver. We talked about, or we have talked about it all season long, is the fact that, like you said, he knows that there's going to be contact. It doesn't matter to him. He will go out and get the football. That's one of the biggest things, too, is he's not just a slot receiver who waits for the football to come to him. You'll see him change his route according to where that football is and come back for it. That's why he's so good. And, and Corey Nealon, I mean, the thing that we've got to look at is Nunez had one read. He saw it, he was open, and that's who he went to. Well, that was the first play of the game with Josh Calvin to Koenig. They had him one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, a little bit better coverage at that time, but he still um, was there. They come right back to it on the opposite side and pick up that touchdown, 50 yards, one play. Yeah, somebody said this is going to be a Fullerton Mount Sack typical game. Well, yeah, so far. So Moore's in on the far side of the field. So Yaro and it, it looks like it's Lucas Moore on the far yeah, side. Yeah, it is. It is Lucas. So that's Yaro on the near side? Oh, Yaro, yes. Okay. Well, we, we think. We think so. Goes over towards Lucas Moore, and it gets kicked out of bounds. So great field position after getting the turnover and a touchdown in the next play. Out come the Mounties. Free kick. 3.37 bounds, to go. It's the Hornet the 7. The, the Mounties 0 down. here on Sportsnet USA.net. Corey Ryan and the old guy. Seeing the big D come through. Ike Udenglu the third bounds, comes out.
Dengu shoots it. Almost there, almost picked. Corey, once again, they come up quick defensively. Ricochet's right, she got back-to-back -back picks. There's a theme here, Kasaias Kearns. <laughs> All conference in the Southern Division. In the Southern League, Kasari, or excuse me, Kasaias, second team. Kadari, second team. Mohammed, the big guy in the backfield, I tell you what, he's a load. They hand it straight up the middle to him. Two guys hit him. Corey, you got to get three or four on him. Gets a gain of four. Ball carrier, Mohamed Niana Mukinga. Dragged down by Emory. Niana Mukinga. Nianga Mukinga. There we go, Corey. That's what I said. <laughs> Big Mo. Big Mo Niana is Mukinga. what I'll refer to him as that. Bringing up third down. Dengu. Mo stays in the backfield. Third down and seven. They go to try to go to the big man. Almost picked on a deflection as they throw behind the running back. He reaches up, goes off his hands, and goes forward towards a defensive back. Aaron Smith comes in. Jordan Smith back deep for the Hornets, comes the kick. Smith comes up, takes it, goes the outside, looks to go back in the middle, turns the corner at the 40, needs an initial block, gets the corner, gets knocked out of bounds across midfield, all the way to the 42. Let's talk about the special teams that time by the Hornets. And there, there was a couple times where there could have been a block in the back, yet the Hornet blockers stayed away and just moved in the way instead of making that push. First down and 10, right at the four. They're gonna mark it at the 43. So the Hornets up by seven. Turnover, one play, they get on the board, and out comes Nunez. Malik Winston in at running back. Gibson to the near side of the field. Koenig in the drive. slot. Smith the to the far two. side of the field. Cameron Woods is tied in. Woods goes in motion, left to right. They go to Koenig, across the middle again. First down, Corey Nealing, you said second team. Where would you have put this young man? First team, he leads the team and he leads the team in receptions, right, leads the team in yards. One the of the tops in again. the conference. I believe Down he was a, one of the leading receivers in conference, if not the leading. Go ahead, so yeah, Jordan Smith also the deserving of all conference. He was first team. I think I would have flip-flopped that. Second down and two at the 35 for the Hornets. Gibson goes in motion. Inside Koenig goes out. Here comes the pressure. Throws it in the flat. Incomplete pass. And it was just a hit enough on Malik Winston that Malik, the ball was in front of him, but the defender was waiting there for him. Yeah. And they want a kick caught on Will Gibson, who was coming up the middle of the field, took out the safety. That was Wells. No, excuse me, Heber. And they're going to look to exploit that zone a little bit more because, as you see, the middle is open in that zone that they're running. Third down and one for the Hornets. We're going to get a flinch on the far side. You saw the posterior raise up like a well, bee, well, get well, a little well, bit of honey. Well, what was, and that's the tight end because you know what's going to happen. That's Jordan Gatewood, Mark. He moves just a little bit because there was 10 in the box. It, you would have expected him to raise up a little, quick little look in to try to exploit that now instead of Tyrell Green Jr. if they were going to run it. Needs to open up that third down and five or six a little bit more. C.J. Broy and Smith to the far side of the field. Koenig and Gibson to the near side of the field. Here comes the pressure. They go back out to Tyrell Green Jr. Tyrell Green Jr. stays on his feet. First down, Hornets. And oh, he, baby. And he took on Mason White, the all-conference player for Mount Sac, one of the best defensive backs you're gonna see this year, Mark. And he picks up that first down. So the coach told us Tyrell that Tyrell Green, Green, Green does not avoid contact. Yeah. 
First down and 10 for the Hornets right inside the 30. We're at the 135 mark in the first quarter. And Nunez hands it off to him again, stays on his feet. Gain of about two. It's going to bring up a second down and a long eight. We're at the 120 mark here in the first quarter. It's the Hornets seven, the Mounties zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Tyrell Green Jr. comes off limping, but we've seen that. Malik Winston back in the game. Second down and eight for the Hornets at the 27. Nunez looks things over, takes his time. Smith to the near side. Nunez keeps it himself. Big man goes up the middle, gets down to the 22. Makes it a makeable third down. And you don't mind that play because that third and manageable is where you want to be at against such a solid defense who doesn't have a lot of sacks on the season, but they're stout and you don't have many big plays. Big third down. Third down and a long three for the Hornets with 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Nunez goes back, has time, goes deep, a misread between Gibson and Nunez that brings up a fourth down. The way they chose, well, Jonathan Fulbert is coming in to kick. It's a cold, damp night. The ball will not fly as well. Faubert was the foot that won things against Golden West or set the tone. 29, you add 10, 39 yard attempt. Low line drive, it's not even going to get there. Ryan Osborne said it was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Tipped or not, it was short. And so the Mounties dodge a bullet with 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, and you want to try to get those points against the Mounties team because the more points you score, well, rule one, the more points you score than the other team, you win. But you want to try to get points on the board because we've seen that the Mounties all season ended this game capable one play scores. First down and 10 on the 22 for the Mounties. Time running the out. Block, ball to over downs, Mount Zach Mounties. Isaiah 22. Dickerson back in at running back. Ike Udengwe Wu comes in at quarterback. Udengwe comes in. Dengwe goes back. Going deep. All the way down the middle. Drops the dime. Touchdown Mounties. Corey Nalen. You couldn't have said that quicker as Shamar Savage outran everybody for a big 78-yard touchdown. And that's the first time all season we've seen Fullerton get beat, well, since the Cerritos game, the second game of the season, get beat deep like that. And like we said, the Mounties, one play score capabilities. Kasias Kearns just got outran. Well, you don't throw for almost 2,200 yards without making a thing like that. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. With five seconds to go in the first quarter, hey, we're knotted up at seven. It's the Mountie seven, the Hornet seven here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So a big play by the Mounties. And they tie this game up quickly against this Hornet football team. Shamar Savage. Hornet kickoff returners, number five, Michael Love and Jordan Smith. Mark, you go back to that play, and you were talking about Fullerton College and their defensive backs ending up getting beat. First time that we've seen that in a while, and it all goes back to the pump fake, Mark. You take a look at that pump fake initially at the line of scrimmage, and it draws the defensive backs in just for a moment, and by the time you pick up your head, he's gone. Yeah, that's the sixth touchdown of the year for Savage for Saddleback. So the guy that can run comes up big. We're knotted up at seven. Well, that's what we expected. Taking it to eight. 
Looking to go up the middle. Stays on the feet. Ball comes out. Back to the Hornet. Almost disaster on the kickoff. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. As we I come to the end of the first quarter, line, it's the Mountie 7, five, the Hornet 7 five, here on Sportsnet USA. Dot Don't forget, Saddleback basketball Bibles. around the corner here on SportsnetUSA.net. Cypress men's and women's Mountain basketball on SportsnetUSA.net. Corey Nealon, Ryan Osborne, the old guy. Well, we thought it would be a typical Mount Sac football game, Ryan. We haven't been disappointed in this first quarter, both these teams are doing well. And that's the thing, Mark. When you talk about Fullerton College versus Mount Sac, it's always about the fact that both of these two teams have very big time pedigrees. Both of these two programs have national championships to this credit, or to their credit. You just look at last year. They play in a postseason game, in a bowl game. Neither of these two teams like each other, and they have a history of having these close types of games. Josh Calvin. Takes it down, dives forward. They're going to mark him down at the 37. It's going to be about a yard short. Well, let's now see. Up the middle for head first They've slide. got him down at the 38. Touchdown so it'll be a second and Wells. two. So we start the second quarter. Malik Winston off a right tackle. It should be enough for a first down and move the chains. So it does. It moves the chains. First Mark, down for the Hornets. Going back to what all three of us were talking about before this game even started is the fact that Fullerton College, if they wanted to have success in this game, we, we talked about it a lot. They have to establish their running game. They got to get their top two running backs into this football game and engage. And so far, you're seeing both of those two backs get their opportunities. You saw Tyrell break one off for about 17. If you can keep them going through a flow, you'll have some success. Josh Calvin throws it to Koenig. And boy, I tell you what, they're lucky Koenig went down because there was a head hunting going on by the Mounties. And that was Joshua Taylor, the linebacker, was going to try and rip Koenig's head off. Well, it was an old-fashioned clothesline. And Koenig is injured, coming out, limping off as he was twisted down. The Fullerton sideline asking for a taunting penalty. So it's second down and 10, right at the 40. Malik Winston shifts right behind Calvin, under center. Give it to Malik Winston. Goes off a right tackle up to the 46. And there's a lot of talking by that Mountie team on the defense right now. And that's both teams that are talking. And he knew that was going to happen between these two schools. With the history they have, last eight games, four and four apiece. Last two times, Mount Sack were the winners. So with the officials calling a timeout, they're going to have a player walk off the field. Will Peroni is getting, he's, he's getting escorted off the field because they say he doesn't have a mouthpiece. He threw the mouthpiece out, which was a Mount Sac mouth, mouthpiece, and now Peroni's out. In comes Sebastian, no, excuse me. Yeah, that's Sebastian Medina now. Comes in at the right guard. I believe Daniel Modellis moves over to the center. Third down and five, right across the 45. Josh Calvin feels the pressure. Hands it off to Malik Winston on a reverse. Flea flicker pay. Josh Calvin, if he gets it there, should be touchdown Hornets. Ryan Osborne. Okay, I've got to tell you this. That. i got to tell you this. Ryan Osborne and I took a walk before the game. Ryan Osborne, go ahead. What did you say to me before this game started? So I said, 
in the first two quarters of play, you would see a trick play down the field that would lead to a very big play for Fullerton College because they want to open up the playbook in the early going and keep Mount Sac on their toes. And they run a flea flicker and the Hornets get on the board. A reverse flea flicker to Cameron Woods, wow. Kick is up, the kick is good. Guys, can I ask you something though? When you saw Cameron right running down the field and he was 20 yards in front, did y'all want to scream out the window, Josh, throw it, throw it. I think it was one of those where he was so wide open that Josh had time to get his feet set and not overthrow it. That's what I thought was gonna happen. And just get his feet set and throw it to the receiver instead of leading the receiver. And that's exactly what he did. Well, Ryan Osborne, so far, you're two for two on what's going on in this field tonight. I'm one for one. Corey Nalen's still sitting at the bottom of the heap with nothing. But, I mean, what's new? I'm, I might have to go over and talk to somebody at halftime because I thought you guys took care of that situation. <laughs> that, that you did say it's your job. I, I will go take care of it. Big play for the Hornets. And Ryan Osborne, it was funny, because I couldn't down, help him. When I saw him play and knew that he had called it, I thought, Ryan, there's one of your two. Big kick, taken at the five, up to the 10, cuts in the middle, spun down at the 22-yard line. So it's the Hornets 14, the Mountie seven, with 12, 13 to go here in the first half. Corey, Ryan, and the old guy bringing you the game here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Guys, when you look at these two teams in the SCFA, Fullerton is eighth in points scored. Mount Sac is fourth. Second in total yards, Fullerton is ninth. Passing yards, Fullerton is 23rd. Mount Sac is third in passing yards. Dickerson at running back. Rawls comes to the near side of the field. First down and 10 at the 23. They hand it off to Dickerson, cuts the outside. Deeks back in the middle, stays on his feet. Should be enough for a first down for the Mounties. Good hard run by the guy out of Tacoma, Washington. 5'10", 190 pound freshman. Far side of the field, St. Julian right, standing Aaron, next to him. Dickerson. Down Cade, Cade Ike throws it out in the flat, knocked away behind the receiver and Zimwa, Zimwa should have had it while well, I'm trying to figure out because you and I were trying to figure out what we were going to call it. That's okay. The tight end missed it. Okay. Zimwa did a nice job of turning and getting rid of the ball but again because Sias Kearns was there to knock it away. Second down and 10 right at the 32. Rawls to the near side of the field and Zinwa the tight end comes his side of the field. Goes in motion from right to left. They go to throw it out in the flat. Again, they throw it to the same man who can't pull it in. Right, Corey, he was all by himself yeah, in the flat. He, yeah, he was. And again, he's a second team all conference performer, but Zinwa just he did, her job, did not come bring it down. It was a little high on the pass from Ike. And a good screen. And we're gonna just call it a block by St. Julian, not a pick. Dickerson stays in the backfield with Dengu at quarterback. Third down and 10 for the Mounties. The Hornets come up. They look like they're gonna play man to man. They do, here comes the pressure up the middle. Going down deep by himself and on the money. You couldn't get a prettier throw to Jaden Allen than that. And that's one where Salem Streeter took it press coverage. Allen is too good to get off, this, off the line of scrimmage with just a stutter step, and they pick up the first down and a pretty ball thrown. St. Julian to the far side of the field. Allen goes with him. In motion was Moore. Of course, the quarterback. Ike, big Ike, takes it himself. Udengwu gets up there, the third. You look at him this season, yards per game throwing the football. 219, 62% as a quarterback. Isaiah Dickerson, in at running back. Rawls, the near side of the field. 
Allen in the slot on this side of the field. Second down. Allen goes to New Dangle, keeps it himself again. Gets enough for a first down across the 30 all the way down to the 26. The streeter again comes up with the stop. He's a safety who came up. Kearns now had it deep. As Tyler Mike Carter, for a first down. the Baron Kennedy Jr. checked Top into the game. The Carter on the inside with Ant Harris. Brandon Sun, who's back, missed some time due to injury. He's the near side defensive end. Rawls and Allen again the near side of the field. Dickerson the running back. The Dengu at quarterback. Ike goes back, throws it over here quickly, gets it to Rawls. Rawls gets knocked out of bounds after a gain of about five on the play. And that's Christian Cross in Fullerton. Is in Rawls. their nickel package as Cross moves to Stop corner. Christian Cross. And Ahoya moves to the nickel back. Second down. Long Rolls five for the Mounties. They're on the move with 9.53 to go in the second quarter, trailing by seven. Dengu goes back again. Same play. Should be enough for a first down. And all they're doing is setting up that hitch route. You where Dengu is going to hitch to the outside for the quick one. Receiver's just going to keep on going. Rawls to the near side of the field. Dickerson in the backfield. Allen in the slot on the far side of the field. Inside Allen is Lucas Moore. Ike Udengwu, the third at quarterback, looks things over. First down and 10. Right at the 17. Dickerson gets hit at the line of scrimmage. He's going to fall forward for two. Amari Williams disrupted the play in the backfield. Amari, who also missed time, getting his groove back now in his third game back. Isaiah Dickerson. So Dickerson in the backfield. I get quarterback. Amari Williams. Lucas Moore in the slot on the far side. Jaden Allen comes inside there. On the near side of the field, Xavier Rawls. Second down and eight. Dickerson shifts from left to right. I goes it goes down in the dirt it could be an incomplete pass Corey Nealon called it before the official it's going to bring up a third Murray. down yes. and eight yeah Ann Harris did a nice job of being well, that intrusive ant in the backfield and making that play just blowing it up and Harris six feet 285 out of Powder Springs Georgia Dickerson stays in at running back Rawl stays to the near side of the field. St. Julian, tight formation of far side of the field. Inside Julian on that side is Jaden Allen. Third down and eight. Dengu has somebody in the slot, looks in the middle of the field. Miss thrown pass and probably the wrong pass to throw because in the flat by himself, was a wide open mounting. And you saw, but they've had trouble with that flat pattern. You saw the yeah, one on an earlier drive from Yandra Mokinga, who overshot him. This third time he was looking for his favorite shooter. receiver, Jaden Allen, in the middle, but just overshot him. Gonna mark the ball at the 23. Skate Skate as long as 47, much closer here, 11 of 15. 33 yard attempt. Kick is up, boy, that should be good. And it is. With 8.26 to Let's go here first. in the first half. Try. It's, it's the Hornets 14, the Mounties 10 on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ryan Osborne, the now prognosticator. Corey Nealon, the enforcer. And the old 20. guy, the slow moving guy here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So the Hornets run a trick play. The Mounties methodically move down the field. Ray, we hope you're doing better. We were hoping we'd see you before the uh, season ended. <laughs> Riverside beat Ventura earlier this day. So whomever wins this game will be at Riverside next week for the Southern California Championship. So we'll be like a lot of you, we'll be out there as fans next week. 
Mounting on the kickoff, Diego Escuena. And the Hornets are out there. I'll be, I'll be the old guy having a nervous breakdown on the <laughs> sidelines. Of course, I have a nervous breakdown every game I watch. High floater. Taking it to 12. Looking for one. Flipped by the first man down by the Mounties. And that's Mario Love Martinez out of Reseda High School does the job of Sing a torpedo. Mario Martinez. Michael Love. So it's the Hornets 14. The Mounties 10 here on SportsNetUSA.net. I'm sure the Riverside team is following this game intensely. First and 10 Hornets at the 18. So the Hornets first down and 10 right at the 18 yard line. Ran a trick play the first time out. A little scrum up the middle. Gain of one on the play. And Garnett Barbara Davis to the third. So the third mark. Now he'll get more, more time now. Tyrell Green Jr. is back in the ball game. This first time we've seen him since he left, left, limped off in the first quarter. We'll get some updates from around the CCCAA. Second down and nine. Josh Calvin goes back, gives it to Gibson, who comes back, needs to get a block, comes back to the middle of the field, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and ran 22 yards to get there. Yeah, Jacob Gaskin was there in the middle of the field. Josh but Adam anyway, Pass. the Mounties, Mark, they just read that play perfectly as they had four of their third defensive nine. backs against three offensive players. So it's going to bring down third down and 10 with 7.19 to go. Great turnout from both programs tonight in this semifinal for the CCCAA Southern Championship. Josh Calvin, here comes the pressure. Calvin throws it away, incomplete pass. So the Hornets do zero with their opportunity, and the Mounties now are feeling like they're going to be knocking on the door and raiding the Christmas tree when they get an opportunity. And for a team that doesn't have a lot of sacks, they do have a lot of quarterback pressure. And that pressure creates havoc for that um, for the quarterback, because he wanted to go over the middle again, he couldn't Mount step Mount up Mount in the Jr. pocket. Quarter punter, Luke Lamana. Lamana gets ready, clean hike, gets it off his foot, nice high viral, single for a fair catch, ball comes out, but right back in the arms of Jaden Allen. So Allen bobbles it and stays right there. 6.55 to go single. in the second quarter. It's the Mounties trailing by four. Mounties it's the Hornets 14, the Mounties 10 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nalen, Ryan Osborne, a cast of 1,003, well, in dog years here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Dickerson comes back in at running back. Xavier Rawls to the near side of the field. Judah Ezenwa comes out there and we're gonna get both teams coming out. So timeout on the field with 6.55 to go. So 6.55 to go in the first half. And Mark, defensively speaking, statewide, two juggernauts on defense. And it doesn't really seem like Fullerton has been that top defensive team. They've done it quietly. They're sixth in the state in defense, total defense. Mount Sac is first in points per game, yards per game given up, passing yards per game given up, 13 in rush yards given up. Fullerton, even though they're sixth overall, 23rd in yards per game, 26th in rush per game, 27th in pass per game, that's statewide, not SCFA-wise. Mark, really quickly, you were talking out of town scoreboard, American River 29 to nothing over top of Laney, and in the other game, it was San Mateo 30 and Modesto 0. 
Dickerson at running back. Ike at quarterback. Hands it off, dive play to Dickerson. Stays on his bait. We're gonna get a flag and usually where it's thrown at Corey, it's going to be holding against the offense. We'll see if that's what the call is. Isaiah Dickerson with the ball carry, flag in the field. And with Chris Harm there, who was second team Southern League. Face mask against the Hornets. So it's gonna be a personal foul, a couple of them against this Hornet defense. Penalty flag. Face mask on Fullerton Hornets. So they walk up to Garrett, tell him. So two big penalties against the Hornets. The biggest penalty in this game, the one that took a touchdown away from the Mounties. With a lineman the going downfield, brought back a 78-yard touchdown pass for the Mounties. They hand it to Dickerson again, goes off right tackle, hits him high, gets down to the 30, and the Mounties are chugging down the field. And there's Marcellus Gaines with the stop, Chris Harm assisting, and Dickerson's pad level Dickerson just lower than the defenders, so and lunging and cruising forward for a gain of nine. Rawls goes to the far Lucas side of the field with Zenwa. Lucas Moore and Savage come to the near side of the field. Now Lucas Moore goes to the far side of the field. They switch position. Tied in in Zenwa right off the tackle's hip on the left-hand side. Dingway takes it off around right corner. Gets knocked out of bounds at the 25. But you see what the inside Second rush is doing to the Fillers and defense. Every, every so often, every Four play, push those down. ends are keep Maximum creeping in, down. crashing down, crashing down, crashing down. Odingwu has that outside, picks up the first. Savage to the near side of the field. Allen comes with him in the slot. So it's Savage and Allen to the near side of the field. Lucas Moore in the slot to the far side of the field with Rawls, way outside there. Dickerson in the backfield. Udengu goes back, looking to go deep. Has the receiver in, touchdown, Mounties. Against excellent coverage, just a better throw, better route. And that's why Mount Sack is so good. They can hit you with that big play. And there was a hold on the inside by the Mountie offensive lineman on Chris Harm who was blitzing not called six points. So Rawls by himself and the Mounties with five, 31 to go. Well, they've struggled up the mountain, but no, wait on, I'll come and get you. They finally got there in time to take the lead. So it's the Mounties 17, the Hornets 14 with five, 31 to go in this first half first here on SportsUSA.net. Again, excellent coverage on the outside, step for step with the receiver, but the length of Rawls, who's 6'2", going against Kearns, 5'10", the other corner is Christian Cross, who's 5'11", they have that vantage, but Edingwood with the perfect throw on the outside, placement at the pylon, Good first half, y'all. It has been exciting football here on Sportsnet USA.net. Riverside moves on into the championship game. That'll be next Saturday. And they will take on the winter, winter, winner of this game. Well, the winter, the cold game here on Sportsnet USA.net. The winner of this game next Saturday. You'll have to check the home pages for the time. Oh, pooch kick. Taken by Smith. Looks to go up the middle. He does. Stays on his feet. Gets hit as they get to the 30. Finally gets knocked down at the 31. Flags go out all over the place. And you can't have that. And you can see the conversations that are going on out there by both teams.
and it looked like a push. Keon Marshall reacting. That's his, I believe that's his second. Brandon's son was in there as well, but you, you have to be smarter than that in this ball game. You can't give up 15 yards against a team that's as good as the Mounties. Well, Corey, and if you're a fan for the Hornets and you're watching this, you see the Mounties giving you all the body position. You know the talking's going on out there. You've already seen two players come up from getting twisted on tackles on the Hornets side, not happy with getting twisted while they're on the ground. Both teams are talking too much. Bulletin has not been silent. But they do get this 15-yard penalty again. And that's, that's why they're going to have to be smarter and play with le more level heads. So it's now another big penalty, and that's three 15-yard oh, penalties against the Hornets. Hornets. Deservedly so. Moving the ball back to the 18-yard line. Now back in a I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. Was, there, I don't, was I don't, there a push after the play? Uh, yeah, and I saw people down in the pile during no, no, the play. They, they, yeah, was there a push on the play? And yes, there, there were was. things going on during yeah. the play. Yes, there was. So shame on the officials for not catching on all players. Crossing pattern. Gets hit deep in the backfield. Spin up to the 22. And if you're a Fullerton fan, you like the fight there from Jordan Smith because initially he got contacted about two to three yards behind the line, turns around, spins off the initial tackle, and is able to reestablish himself and get forward for at least one. Yeah, and Joshua Taylor was there who made that first contact. Gain of one on the play. Second down and nine at the 19. The Hornets have lost their speed. Come around the corner, getting the block, the 20. Driven out of bounds at the 35, and that should be against the Mounties. And it is. There's a flag thrown. It's going to go against number one in white, Mason White. We'll see. As that first down run by Tyrell Green Jr. is what they Shaky need to get Jr. their rhythm back. First down, Tyrell Green. So it's going to add on 15 Rich. yards to that run. So the officials talking to each other. We'll see which way the penalty goes. And that's Will Gibson who was over there. Will Gibson's a, one of those physical guys who can who matches up well against the secondary for the Mounties. Dead ball, personal foul against the Mounties. <laughs> and here it is, Gibson standing there. He points at Mason White. He points back at Gibson. Because Gibson personal does have flair to him. Yeah. A big guy like that goes field. down easily First like that. You gotta minutes. wonder. He's just saying, I need that 15 yards back. 4.28 to go. Hornets trailing by three in this first half. Nunez back in there. Mounties creep up. Nunez goes back, has time. Going deep, goes the far side, throws it out of bounds. And we have the official walking yeah, up is. real quick, and he's going to start Gibson. talking to all oh, these no. players and telling. And you see the Mountie player putting his hands up going, I didn't do anything. He gave the grave digger sign. The official saw it, came walking up and said, hey, okay, guys, let's just, you know, go back to playing football. Second down and 10 at the 50 for the Hornets. Mountie's done a better job in the second quarter of guarding the middle of the field. Here they come. Throw it over Aiden. Aiden stays on his feet, gets flung down after a gain of six on the play. Good positive play. Now, it might be too early to say that Fullerton needs a score here, but you would like to have a touch. Not well, you would like to have points, well, at least point. a field goal attempt on this muscle. drive. So it's a third down, and we're going to make it third five point. exactly. Right at the 43. They've got to get to the 38 for a first down. 342 to go here in the first half. The Mounties up by three. It's the Mounties 17, the Hornets 14. Here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Big third down play. Corey Naylor would say, is it an important one? 
this stage of the game, this could be a turning point. Timeout, Hornets. Yeah, well, I guess we got our answer. Is it an important one? Because the, Mount, the Hornets call a timeout because they need this third down and five. So the Mounties, the thing about the Mounties, guys, and I got to say it to both of you, the Hornets jump on top. Everybody gets excited. The Hornets pull up the big play, and the thing about the Mounties, no, who are ranked Hornets. third in the state, the southern section behind Riverside and Fullerton, is there's just a swagger about this team that they don't seem like, hey, get up by 14, it doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't. Not with this team. They're a good team. I mean, this is the best Mountie team we've seen, I'm going to say, in the last five years. They've had excellent talent the last five years, but this is the best team that they've had in the last five years. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen. I think you could go back to that 2015 team that played Fullerton in the playoff, the Joey Verhage year. That's the last time that we saw a team this good for Mount Sac. Third down and five for the Hornets. Tyrell Green in the backfield. Nunez at quarterback. Nunez, slot pass, cross the middle, first down Hornets. Big body of Will Gibson working against Maloa Wells. So first down at the 35. C.J. Broy to the near side of the field. Gibson Tony Nick in the line. slot Hello. next to him. Tyrell Green, the running back. Nunez, the quarterback. First down and 10. They fake it to Tyrell. Cross the middle of the field. C.J. Broy intercepted Mounties. And he had him open. He had Koenig open in the seam again in the middle. But that's Russell, Lance, Lance Russell, Russell, who picks it off. Russell he had Koenig, Koenig underneath. Well, not underneath, but underneath before Russell overthrows him. That's his second overthrow. But overthrows him, and Koenig just couldn't come down. That's athleticism. And that's what they do on the Mountie side of the ball. And Ryan Osborne said they'd get one or two picks in this game. Just at an inopportune time. That was a drive where Fullerton was getting their momentum back, their step back. Mount Sac Mounties begin to drive on the three-yard line after the INT. Mohammed comes back, the big back. It's time to bruise people out of the way. First down, handed to Moe. He goes the outside, turns the corner after a gain of three. If he just falls forward, he gets three yards. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're not a, you're not a small guy, 6'2", 240 out of Brooklyn, you fall forward, that's three. You run for three, you fall forward, that's six. Gain of four on the play, second down and six, 227 to go. The Ding Wu. The third at quarterback. Boy, he has found the button on his passes. They run it again. It's Big Mo gets taken down quickly. It's going to bring up a third down and five for the Mounties. We're at the two-minute marks. The Mounties are up by three. It's the Mounties 17, the Hornets 14 okay, here on Sportsnet. USA.net. Big third down play. The Hornets would like to hold them here. Make them punt away and get an opportunity with a minute to go. They run the clock down. No play clock being kept on the field. Play clock not running. The Mounties look over. They can call a timeout. We'll see if they do. Mounties looking the distance and said, is it time? They said, yeah, go ahead, call a timeout. Time so out. a timeout on the field. One twenty-two to go. It's the Mounties 17, the Hornets 14 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. It's been a fun year with Garrett Campbell, Brian Crooks, Phil Austin. Of course, we had a wonderful conversation with David Robinson today out there in the field. Coach Williams, the linebacker coach. Kevin Marino, the offensive line coach. Big Donnie, who gives us a hug all the time. The only thing good about Big Donnie is, guys, we all look like we need to be, eat more food when we stand around Donnie, don't we? We all look like we're underweight against him. One of the nicest men you would meet, the offensive line coach here, Chris Dixon with the tight ends. Keenan Gardner, 
the pass game coordinator, Dustin Sober, the running back coach, Sean McCormick, defensive quality coach, Jeff Cameron, offensive quality coach, and Dave Lamb, the video quality coordinator here for your Hornet team. Third down. They throw it out in the slot. Caught, hit, taken down. Nice stop. Hornets don't call a timeout. Timeout by the Hornets. And that's going to be their final timeout of the second half. Christian Cross. Timeout, Bulletin. That is your final timeout of the first half. Oh, second half. I said second half. First half. Final timeout of the first Corey, half. Corey, big defensive <laughs> play, though, because you don't let the Mounties get up there to the 20, get that first down, and then try to go deep. You make them put the ball away. Worst case scenario, you're down by three at the half, and you receive the ball to start the second half. Yeah, and how confident do you feel if you're a Mountie right now at your own 12-yard line with less than a yard, one yard to go? You could think about going for it here. Well, some of us say it's a 55-yard kick Bobby with an overturn. Riverside. They win against they win. Ventura. Ventura gave him a scare, but it wasn't enough here on SportsNetUSA.net. That fumble really hurt them. So if you're the Hornets, do you play it just close to the vest and get out of this half? Nunez throws over, throws it off. Incomplete pass. They stop the clock. At least the clock is stopped, but no, you got to try to get some points on the board. And those completed passes that happen so quickly at the beginning of this game are not happening now for this Hornet football team. Second down. Draw play up the middle. Tyrell Green gets fought for. Now that one, Mark, was an iffy call. On uh, Her Hebert came up after the play, uh, and it looked like he okay. came up with the high on the helmet. Twenty nine seconds to go here in the first half. They'll run it again, straight up the middle, taken out to the forty. And with 14 seconds to go, the Mounties are going to be content to let this clock go down. Tackle great up the middle. Tackle by Joshua Taylor. And that's going to take us to the end of the first half. As we come to the end of the first half, the it's the, the Mounties 17, half. the Hornets 14 here on Sportsnet. USA. Dot net. Ryan Osborne and I'll talk. Corey Neal is going to do a little business here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Ryan may take a look around the CCCAA today, Ryan, with those bowl games that are going on. But So I'm going to go to you and see where we're going first here at halftime of this game between Mount Sac and your Fullerton College Hornets. Well, the first thing that we're going to do, Mark, is we're going to go to men's soccer at Fullerton College as they had a playoff game and a little bit of a playoff run to start off their postseason. You know, the last time that we talked to them was right before their postseason matchup against Cuyamaca. They ended up winning that one 2-1. to one. And when you look at Fullerton College men's soccer, we've talked a lot about Greg Avilas, talked a lot about his program and what they're able to do in terms of their successes, that academy style, how they're able to train their athletes and not only just on the field uh, success, but also off the field as well. Well, you take a look at their postseason and if you're Fullerton College, you kind of have to look at it as a victory for yourself. Cuyamaca, two to one win. They end up going on Tuesday and facing Long Beach at home, a 2-1 to one win for Fullerton College in round three of the SoCal Regional. However, earlier today, Fullerton College with a 2-1 loss to Oxnard, the only team that Coach Greg Avilas and that entire coaching staff talking to myself and Mark, they said Oxnard is the one team you have to watch in Southern California 
who Fullerton College said, that's the team that you're going to have to circle, not only on the calendar, but in the standings. They told us that before the season. They told us that before the postseason started. Fullerton College had to travel to Oxnard, and they end up dropping it 2-1. to one. So that's where their season will end. But Fullerton College, Mark, two wins in the postseason. You get yourself to round number three. A lot of freshmen on that roster, and yet they looked dominant throughout the back half of the season. Well, they got an, an incredible coaching staff. And when you look at some of the other programs in the OEC, look how many former Fullerton coaches have started bigger programs around that thing. So we'll see what happens here on SportsNetUSA.net. Yeah, you talk about the fact that Fullerton College, many of those people who come from Fullerton College's coaching staff go on and have opportunities to have their own programs. We've talked to a lot, not only in the Orange Empire Conference, but across the state as well. Talking to Coach Greg Avilas, he mentions that he keeps in touch with all of his former coaches and also his peers in Northern California, and he takes his team on the road to Northern California so that way they have an opportunity to be able to go out and face the toughest competition in the state of California because as we were told before this postseason started, they do that to ensure that their team not only has a watermark to see how good they are, but also get a chance to put up points and make themselves as strong as team as possible. Yeah, there's a point system in soccer that you have to achieve, and you could be a losing team and still make the playoffs, which is quite remarkable here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Yeah, and when you want to talk about soccer, we are going to give you an update about the Fullerton College women's soccer program. They end up in the SoCal Regional Playoffs. They do end up dropping their playoff game 3-1 to Antelope Valley. But you look at Pam Lewin's squad and that entire women's soccer team for Fullerton College, a very successful season, especially a very, very hot run towards the end of the year. Those student athletes, when you get a chance to talk to them, they tell you exactly what's going on on the field, what their reads are, what they're looking to progress at before they get to the postseason. I mean, you take a look at the last run that Fullerton College had, three straight wins going into the postseason, 2-1 over Orange Coast, 5-0 over Irvine Valley, and 2-0 over Santa Ana. You go to the Orange Empire Conference and keep two clean sheets to end your season. That's a good soccer team. Unfortunately for the women's soccer side, they do end up dropping their postseason game but they get themselves into the playoffs with a very nice run to finish off their season. Yeah, we did uh, on SportsnetUSA.net, Cypress and Saddleback soccer also this year. We got to go to the third round where Cypress women took on the women from Saddleback. An exciting one to nothing game. I tell you what, it was scoreless for 85 minutes. And then going into that 86th minute, off the corner, got in. Then all of a sudden, the referee swallowed his clock. We went into about six and a half minutes of stoppage time, which doesn't happen in community college soccer. And Cyprus went berserk. They hit the left post, the right post, and the top of the goal, which I thought went in, but it did not. And then the save made by the goalie for Saddleback. Off her fingertips, kept one out. Finally, time ran out. Saddleback College moved on. That's the one thing when you take a look at SportsNetUSA.net, we want to remind everyone that here on SportsNetUSA.net, it's not just football. We've got a lot of sports on the docket. Mark was talking about basketball coming up on SportsNetUSA.net. We also had a lot of soccer from Cyprus, had the opportunity to be able to not only go out and do those games, but promote student athletes from across different sports. Yeah, men and women sports that aren't really seen or talked about, and they're really a bunch of great athletes, Ron. I'll tell you what, you couldn't meet nicer people in the world than community college athletes. I mean, these are young people, as you know, because you're over at one of the local colleges, that are trying to find their way to that next level, be D1, D2, D3, NAIA. You've been associated with all those levels of college sports. And they're trying to pursue that degree in sociology, that degree in history. Maybe they're a nursing major, and they're using their sports to move on. They're polite. Their families are wonderful people because they're out there like all these families are tonight. And for you and I and for Mr. Nealon, 
it's been fun being associated with sportsnetusa.net because we don't focus on one sport and say, we need to be the sport of football. We need to be the sport of basketball. We like all the sports. Hey, we'll take on water polo. We'll take on lacrosse. It's a sport that nobody talks about. Let our cameras come in. We'll do it here on sportsnetusa.net. You know, it's funny you mentioned talking to those student athletes and getting an opportunity here on sportsnetusa.net to be able to talk to those student athletes before the game starts, after the game ends, and getting a chance to be able to say, okay, what's your mindset going into this? Where is this sport going to take you? You know, we've already talked about Title IX throughout this entire season. Want to be able to spread that awareness for people who don't realize what Title IX is. You're able to go out and talk to those athletes. You talk to a few golf athletes throughout this season and be able to kind of hear what these athletes think, not only about Title IX, but where their sport is going to take them, what they feel about their sport, the progressions or regressions that are being made. They're very honest with us about what they see in terms of not only their future, but also the future of their academics and also the sport they play. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, we've talked to a lot of football players over the years, and I'm going to use this sport. I've had the pleasure to have my brother-in-law out, Dr. James R. Payne, talk to some of the athletes. Ryan, we'll see athletes that will walk back, or they may see you, and they'll stare at you, and they'll go, hey, how's it going? And you'll look at it for a second and say, oh, okay, I remember you from two years ago. And there's nothing better than hearing the good feeling stories of these young football players that go out to all the different levels of football and come back and tell us about the successes they have in completing their college education. We love the sports, but we love these young guys that we get to see all the time when we do the coaches show to come out. We want to hear that they succeeded. And that's the fun part about community college sports. It's a great thing. We talked about it earlier with one of the parents here and said, hey, did you watch the New England Patriots game? And he goes, why? We said, you do the number one running back, came out of Cerritos College. We got this blank stare from him and goes, excuse me? These are the future in some of the many major sports, not be it soccer, softball, football, baseball, you find them here at the community college level. Well, not only the future of their sport, but also the future of our society as well. Many times we've been able to talk to these student athletes when they are student athletes and talk to them and say, hey, you know, we appreciate what you do on the field. Love being able to watch you go out and excel at your sport. And then five years down the line, they end up showing back up at a Fullerton game, at a Cypress game, at a Saddleback game that we're broadcasting. And they look at us and they say, hey, you know, I got to talk to you guys five years ago. You remember when you interviewed me? And we'll say, yeah. And then they say, well, you know, I went on to go and get my degree from this university or this school. And I went into this profession. And now I'm the head of X, Y, and Z. I'm the head of this program. I've just started at this program or I'm earning my master's degree. They come back and they talk to us about their successes that they have outside of community college sports because they played community college sports. We get the opportunity to be able to see that day in and day out. And it's something that the fan that watches online, that is able to watch these games, maybe doesn't realize as much that those student athletes, they go on, they have their successes. And it's awesome to be able to not only see it, but when they come back, they contact us and they say, hey, guys, remember me from eight years ago? Hey, we had someone recently who came up to us and said, hey, I was on that 2016 Fullerton College team. You guys remember me? We say yes. And they say, hey, I'm having this great success. I was able to get my degree, use football to be able to get there and have successes and be where I am because of not only football, but because of the sports and the coaches made them into that well-rounded individual that moves on and is able to have that success. And we've got our old partner, Corey Nalens, back on the air with us. Corey, some people look at community college athletes and sort of poo-poo the fact, oh, they're community college players. Oh, they're not that good. They couldn't make it at the next level. And you've talked about the history of basketball for men and women in the community college level and every place else. These are not athletes that nobody knows. These are athletes that have shown you they can play any game on any level here on sportsnetusa.net. Corey's writing down notes. 
to Ryan Osborne. So here I am talking to my partner, and he's going, yeah. <laughs> I, I heard you, Mark. See, see, the thing is about community college athletics, people don't really know that that exists, even still today. I mean, community college athletics, you'll find, like I came in the tail in your conversation, which would be a good podcast, that would actually be a podcast. Okay, talking about subjects, talking about things. Oh, not broadcasting a game? No, that's not a broadcast. That's a podcast. Anyway, um, we've seen players come out here and, and go to that next level and be the superstars of, uh, of you know, football, Hollywood Brown. See, superstar at College of the Canyons. I saw Jason Pierre-Paul for the Saints. Is he on the Saints now? I believe no. so, yeah. On the Saints, making a big play who played at College of the Can. You talk about guys like that. You talk about uh, Drew Grew, who played at Fullerton College, went to Ohio, now successful businessman. I mean, you just want to talk about the NFL. You look at Fullerton College. They've got a couple guys who are not only on practice squads, but also making 53-man rosters a few years back. D'Angelo Ross, who was on the Patriots, the Miami Dolphins as well. And then you also have guys on Mount Sac. I mean, just recently, Bruce Irvin yeah. ends up getting himself a Super Bowl, went through Mount Sac. Yeah, well, wait a minute. And if we're going to talk about people, we were at Butte in 2013. And, of course, who was from Butte? Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers. Ah, I we, thought I'd get we that in there. That Packer and I speaking. And even though you may not hear their names big time, Joel Griffith, I told you, who went to Fullerton College, one of the all-time great uh, basketball players at Fullerton College, went to Concordia. Now she's an assistant coach at Pepperdine University, still following that career path as a coach. So, And actually, going to that point, it's not just community college. Oh, it, it's only community college. You have to look at it from not only just the community college standpoint, but also a national standpoint. We were looking at a story online on Fullerton College's homepage recently where one of the assistant coaches for the softball team at Fullerton College wins the softball assistant coach of the year. Now, that's not for community college. That's not for non-D1 schools. That includes NAIA, Division III, Division II, and Division I, and a community college coach wins the assistant coach of the year at Fullerton College because of the work that they're doing. It's not just community college. It's not only community college. It's the future of our society. And guys, uh, Ed Ford, did you get Ed Ford's mention real quick? I did not. 21 to 14 halftime Cerritos over Long Beach City College. That's also a game on now on sportsnetusa.net that you can click back and forth or open up two screens. I think you can do that on a computer, right? Open you can. Up two screens, yeah. Two windows. There you go. Two well, windows. That's nice. You want to talk about Cerritos? Continuing with our conversation, or at least lacing it in here on SportsnetUSA.net. The more that you watch SportsnetUSA.net, the more you're able to see those athletes, like maybe a Ramondre Stevenson, who is on SportsnetUSA.net two years in a row for Cerritos College, one of the best running backs we've ever seen at the community college level, goes on to Oklahoma, really balls out over there, goes to the New England Patriots, is now the lead running back for the New England Patriots. And where was he found first? Isaiah well, Anderson. if you're watching us online on SportsnetUSA.net, you see those guys. I think that game is archived as well. It is indeed. Yeah, so you can, you can watch those guys at the community college level to see where did they come from, where they came from right here. Like I said, that would be a good podcast during this game. Anyway, you know, and speak. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead, Corey. I wanted to carry it over to one of the things that we always talk about. I told you I was going to bring this up and print it out. It's the SCFA, it's the NCFA. It's the Northern California Bowls, it's the Southern California Bowls. Why not let's just have some more unity in the CCCAA? And yes, we like these local go bowl games against, you know, Cerritos and Long Beach City College rivalry, Fullerton Mount Sac, this is a different type, this is a playoff game. But those bowl games, gentlemen, let's think outside of the box. Here's another opportunity for an actual podcast. The National Division, this is what I came up with. I sent this email to you guys. before. This was before the seedings came out. 
the Beach Bowl, it wouldn't just be SoCal versus SoCal and NorCal versus NorCal. It would be SoCal versus NorCal in every bowl game except for the playoffs, national division playoffs stay where they're at. But the American Division Championship would not have been Mount San Jacinto versus Citrus for the SoCal. It would be what you thought about, the American Division Championship, Feather River versus Citrus. Yeah, that would have been a heck of a game. You know, and I, I think what it does is, here's what it does too, guys. Bragging rights come up. We've heard it before. Oh, the North, you know, we play, look at look at San Francisco, champion, 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 how great they are. Of course, if we go to softball, last year was the first time there were two Northern California teams in the championship round ever in the history of community college softball. Bragging rights have been in the South for years. If they played more interstate, then those bragging rights really stand up because we'd say here from the South, you can't beat us. Well, I remember going back to that 2016 year where LA Valley ended up having that undefeated season. They dominated everyone. They had the number one defense in the state. You go all the way up to to the northern side really had a nearly undefeated season and everyone was clamoring for the fact that hey can we see something like that where we can see a southern powerhouse in the american conference and really a northern powerhouse in the american conference you get that opportunity to face each other and not only is it good for both schools to have bragging rights it's another chance for those student athletes to really promote themselves yes. and get an opportunity to show what they can do. Exactly, and if you really wanted to do it right, you'd have that American Division Championship on December 3rd. Wow, well, you guys, that would be the game. And then you have the National Division Championship on December 10th. If it works in the NAIA Division One and Two, the SoCal Bowl would be Merced at Mount San Jacinto. The Northern California Bowl would be Santa Barbara at Redwoods. Silicon Valley Bowl, El Camino at Foothill, and the Strawberry Bowl would be Monterey Peninsula at Moore Park. So that's just the American Division Bowl games. Would seems like it would have more um, eyes on it, more enthusiasm, more um, you know willingness, and see what's happening on that. And in the National Division, who wouldn't want to see College of the Canyon versus Golden West? Oh yeah, that would have been a heck of a game mm -hmm. this year. Sierra versus San Diego Mesa, two teams that are up and coming. So I'd take that. Sequoias versus Elac. Oh, yeah, I'd like that. I'd like to see what happens there. Here's your team, Mark. Butte hosting Cerritos. That, that would, see, be, that a, would that'd be, a be a heck of a game. game. At Butte, because it's a great mm -hmm. stadium. Yeah. Canyons yeah. at Diablo Valley. Ooh. And um, uh, Alan Hancock at Fresno City. And it, here's what it also opens up to. You mentioned it just a few moments ago. A great stadium up north at Butte. If you get those bowl games to happen, north versus south, you mix it up. Make sure that it's the best teams facing each other. You also expose people, fans, families, friends, who go out there and watch that game to different parts of your state. And it promotes your state. That's exposure for these athletes. That's how you get exposure. That's how you promote and get people knowing about California community athletics. We've got a whole list, not just on football, but basketball, soccer. I heard you keep talking. That's how you expose these athletes. You know, everyone talks about college football in, in California, and they talk about different places with views. And you talk about the Stanfords. You talk about the Cows. You talk about UCLA. You talk about USC. But if you want to look at picturesque type of settings for football, I mean, just take a look at one of the teams that played today in the Northern California playoff, San Mateo. If you ever get a chance to not only go in person to be able to see that, but just take a look at it online. Go to Google, search it up, look at San Mateo's home stadium, look at the view that they see from their stadium and you're looking straight over the San Francisco Bay and that's what they get to look at every single time they go out and they play football. Take a look at Santa Barbara City College. Oh, yeah. Look at their view. They get the Pacific Ocean right over top of their stadium. So if you get those bowl games, you get fans to go to different places. They discover different things. They realize, you know what, community college football isn't going to your local stadium and just you know playing the game everyone goes home you get an opportunity to go out explore 
discover different places in the state of California, you get quality competition, and you get places that you get to go to and say, man, I remember when I got to go to San Mateo, watch a game. Not only did I get to watch that game at San Mateo, I got to look at all the ships coming across the harbor, all the ships going past the San Francisco Bay, and it was a beautiful time to watch football and observe my surroundings. Well, guys, it's a great way to set a weekend. We've gone to a couple championship games. Corey Nalen and I have. You've gone with us, right? It's a great three-day weekend. I mean, it's a way to get away. It's a way, like you said, to look at the student-athlete, to see places that they never knew about. Wait a minute, there's a community college here? I didn't know that. And it says, hey, you know, I'd like to go away to school, but I don't want to leave California. I don't know, what is there, guys, 150 community colleges in California? That's what it feels like? 117, I believe. 117. You get to try these different ways of scheduling. You get to see them all here on SportsNetUSA.net. Just us going up to Sacramento a few years back. You go up to Sacramento, you see the Sacramento Bowl. Note that all the history that happened in that stadium prior to 2017 you go all the way back nearly a hundred years worth of history not just football soccer having historic soccer teams world soccer teams maybe like a Bayern Munich if you have some soccer fans out there national soccer teams who end up warming up and playing there maybe you I don't know maybe you've heard of the San Francisco 49ers oh yeah they've also warmed up and played at that Sacramento Bowl or at least practice there for upcoming games. You get to go to those stadiums, learn about the history of the surrounding area. You get those opportunities. I mean, even the stadium that's in front of us, Labard, we watched some old footage recently of Labard and how it looked back in the day when Fullerton College had some opportunities to play here as well. Learn the different history and opportunities in front of you. You, you, meant, you, you meant football, right? Yeah, that football. I was talking Not about football. 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 That's true. Football. Football. That's right. That's and right. Soccer. Very Football. quickly, very quickly before we get to the kickoff, we've been talking about the state of California. We update you with the scores around San Mateo 30, Modesto 0. So San Mateo moves on to the Northern California Championship, and as does their counterpart American River, they are closing towards the end of their football game. It's 36-21. They have a 15-point lead with seven and a half minutes left to go over Laney. And you're back to this game. We're at half. We get ready for the second half. It's the Mounties 17, your Hornets 14, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Take a trip. Go to all the schools we talked about. We had our way. We'd be on a trip every weekend here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Smith takes it at the 10. Looks to go to the outside. Gets an initial block. Slows down and waits. Got an alley. Gets up to the 30, gets taken down at the 32. The Mounties up by three. The winter winner moves on. The loser says it's been a fun season here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nealon, Ryan Osborne, and the old guy happy to bring you all these games this season on Sportsnet, USA.net. Brandon Nunez, Mark, was 6 for 11, 11, 83 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Josh Calvin, three for six for 54 yards and one touchdown in that first half. Not much running. Well, Tyrell Green Jr., eight carries, 54 yards in that first half. 31 yards by Aiku Dingwa on scrambles in that first half. He had two touchdowns on nine of 16 passes for 179 yards. His big receivers, Xavier Rawls and Jaden Allen, three catches each, 37 yards and 45 yards respectively. So we have a flag on the play. The official's gonna come out, tell us who it's against. So he's trying to explain it to somebody. I didn't know if he was talking to. It looked like he was talking to Coach Gamble. And now he goes over to Mount Sack to explain it to them. It was, the flag was up the field. It was dropped at the 40 yard line. The play itself ended at the 32. Nothing has been signaled yet. With all the conversation going on, it looks like it's going to be, the way they're huddling up here, it looks like it's against the Hornets. Both 
We have Bodie on the receiving team. Going to return. We have a face mask on the return by the kicking team. Both penalties will offset. We will re kick. So, as you heard, it was holding against the Hornets, face mask against the Huskies. So we're going to start things all over again. Just a few minutes later here on SportsNetUSA.net. Mark, I know that you're excited for the winter, but it is the Mounties who are here. The Huskies played Golden West early. Oh, did I call them the Huskies? You did indeed. Oh, okay. If we had a Husky, I knew Huskies. Well, if we, if we had a Husky, we put her down there near, near Gabby. Keep her warm? Yeah. I know I've been calling them the Mounties all night, so, you know, <laughs> hey. One mistake out of 28,000 tries. I'm, I'm feeling good this season. Taken at the five. Straight up the middle. Looking for an alley. Bouncing the outside at the 30. Knocked way out of bounds. Flag against Mount Sack. And that late hit is gonna be Emmanuel Woka. Hit out of bounds by Emmanuel So it was brought up to the 35. We'll see if it's 15 yard penalty. The fans are excited. The Hornets trailing the Mounties. <laughs> Tupu Ola up front for the Mounties along with Dupre Mendoza. Head ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Penalty, first down. Jacob Gaskin in the 3 4. The backers are Supranant, also LaFau, and Darius Eves, the starters, and then Manawa Lo Manoa Wells. Balls at midfield, first and As well, we'll get the secondary in just a moment. PA got louder or did yes. my hearing clear up? It got louder. Wow. Straight off to Tyrell Green Jr. Gain a four on the play. Yeah. Will Gibson standing out there going, there's nobody covering me. Throw me the football. That's okay. They need to get this running game going in to hit Gibson on the outside. Tupaola was in there, shot through. But Gaskin makes the stop. Lance Russell, 22 in white. Number two is Aaron Smith, the safety. One is Mason White. Five is, or three is Anthony Hebert. Jeremy Gonzalez, they go back. Josh Calvin across the middle, whistles one. Across the middle of the field, incomplete pass. And he's got to put that on the numbers because that pass play is going to be there all night for the Hornets. So it's going to bring up a third down, which looked like a prospective start for the Hornets, stuttering just a little. Third down on a long five and a half. Gibson goes out far to the right. Tyrell Green Jr. in at running back. Man in motion. They come up. Here they come after Josh Calvin throws it out of bounds, incomplete pass. It's going to bring up a fourth down for the Hornets. Sorry about that. Mark Lance Russell bumped Cameron Rhodes off his Josh pattern. And it was Cameron a run, read, and go. After you pick up four strong yards on that first down run, two straight passes, one pass over the head, and third pass, third down Nine pass had no opportunity for completion. For player, Luke Mamana. So big fourth down, Hornets couldn't do anything, down by three, the Mounties looking to get back in the game, end over end, should take a favor, bounce for the Hornets, and they're gonna down it at the nine yard line. With 13.54 to go, Come well the Mounties, feeling the good. Hornet Davis. It'll be first down and 10 at the nine. And you can't get beat deep. Mount Sack will look to go and air it out here, deep in their own zone, to try to get that big play. That's what they're known for this season as we see strikes thrown by Ike. Ike Udingwu, the third, comes out. Had an excellent first half at quarterback. Dickerson, the running back comes in. First down and 10 at the nine for the Mounties. Udengwu looks things over. Comes back. 
keeps it himself, goes the outside, gets missed on the first one, gets across the 15 to the 16 yard line, gain of seven on the play. Out of Workman High School, Workman had some pretty good athletes back in the 80s, I wanna say, Robert Johnson in basketball, Vincent Blow, who went to Cal State I'm Fullerton, 6'8 center. center. One of the best pitchers in the history of softball, Rhonda Wheatley went to Workman High School as well. Brewer out to the right side, Moore in the slot. Dengu goes back, goes right there, hit, ball comes out. Hornets have to pick it up, they do. And was that Salen who punched it out from behind? Okay. Salen Streeter, number four in gray, punched it out. And the Hornets are in business. Turnover number two, Ryan Osborne said the defense would get two. Boy, I'll tell you what, did you play the lotto tonight? You're doing pretty good. Just had a good feeling. I know what you said the outcome of the game was going to be, too. I won't bring that up. Yeah, Chris Harm was there as well. Harm and Streeter having solid games. Now, let's see if the Hornets can capitalize. You know Tyrell Green is going to run hard. And us having conversations, you know that Mark and I are very aggressive in our approach. I say right here, you go up for the end zone, make them capital or make them pay for that turnover. Josh Calvin at quarterback, first down and ten at the 32. CJ Broy goes in motion. Calvin comes back, looks over to Broy, hits him in the arms. He drops the football. You don't cradle a football. You catch it with your hands. I'd be. A, I tell you what, you can't catch with your hands. You can't play for me. That's all there is to it. So the official comes out and says, "Incomplete pass, gentlemen." He dropped the football and they gave him a gain of four. I like these officials. First down and ten. Second down and ten. Calvin sees if they're coming. Tyrell Green Jr. goes the outside, gets hooked, gets a gain of two on the play. Okay, guys, I've got to ask you. Yes. Okay, Corey Neal is already going for it on four downs. Ryan Osborne? I'd have to agree. Lauf Powell on the stop. He makes the tackle on the right side. They've been successful all season between the A and the B and the trap plays, the two holes and, and the threes. They've been closed up tonight. Third down and a long five for the Hornets. They look like they're coming on the outside. Give it to Tyrell Green. Tyrell Green stays on there. They hook him. He gets around. Corey Naylor says, give it to my man. Let him run the football. The Green Machine is the beast from the east for a reason. And that time... They spread it out. You see the center and the left guard? They run between the left guard and the left tackle. First down and 10 at the nine. Josh Calvin, the quarterback. Green says, I'll take it again. He does take it again. Gets it across the 10. Gain of four on the play. And Josh Calvin has motor. He has a leg. He has legs himself. Okay, if they're going to key on Tyrell Green, Green Jr. here, get Josh Calvin out of his uh, out of the pocket with Cameron Woods running with him. Cameron Woods comes in the game as tied in on the right side. Gibson goes far to the right. Second down and seven at the ten. Tyrell Green Jr. straight up the middle. Gain a two on the play. It brings up a third down and maybe four when they set it into play. And a bear hug by Dupre Mendoza wraps him up. And here's the thing. He wanted to bounce it outside, but he didn't have the opportunity. That defensive unit for Mount Sag did an excellent job of containing him. Smith on the near side of the field. Gibson on the far side of the field. Green in the running back. Big third down and four. They walk seven to the line of scrimmage. Now they drop off a linebacker. They go back to a four, three on the defense. Here come the Mounties, straight up the middle. Tyrell Green gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Garrett looks like he might be playing for the points here on a field goal, but hey, semifinals, you gotta get your points. One field goal was missed already from 39. 
Jonathan Fobear will come in with his right leg. All-conference performer. Big game two weeks ago against Golden West. Let's see if he can get this one from 25. Spotted at the 15. You add on 10. Needs this to tie the game. Ball is up. Kick is up. And the kick is good with 10-11 to go. Well, we're all knotted at 17 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. They needed points. Yeah, they did. Yeah, if they had come away with zero, it would have been all Mounties the rest of the half here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So we start all over again. We take the 17. We get rid of them. We go down to zeros. We start back in the first quarter. It's like a soccer overtime match, Ed Ford. We're going to play another 30 minutes. Oh, well, we actually are playing football, so I guess we're going to keep going here with 10, 11 to go in the third quarter. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen. Well, guys, we knew it would be a nail-biter. Riverside wins earlier today. They move on, and it's typical. Fullerton against the Mounties. Saddleback was looking to move on this year. They didn't do anything. Cerritos got close. Riverside is there. And now here, Mount Sac and Fullerton in the semifinal here on Sportsnet, USA.net. High floater, signaled for a fair catch. Ball comes out, goes down. Hornets ball on the football. Turnover number three. Fair catch was signaled for Ryan Osborne, and the receiver panicked. He lost it. He, yeah, he lost it in the lights, and the thing is is that when he takes a look upfield, he looks straight at that football, does, waits for the fair catch, takes a look at the official to make sure that he registers it. By the time he re-picks it up, he realizes that that ball is short. So he has to sprint towards the football, and by that point, it's too late for him to get to it. And guys, it went down at halftime. The condensation on the field from the fog, it's pretty thick, so it could have been slippery as well, but he just lost that. Now you need a touchdown. Brandon Nunez. I'm trying to think, is Nunez, I can't tell. Is Nunez in? He is. Nunez has time, he's gotta throw it. Across the middle of the field, incomplete pass. And Nunez got lucky that Dupre Mendoza goes, uh, let's see, 6'3", 6'5", 300 pounds out of a Royal High School. Yeah, he needs to take off and run on that. So incomplete pass, second down and 10 at the 14. And here's where the Mounties are most dangerous. Nunez looks things over. Goes back, keeps it himself, takes it up the middle, gets down to the 10. We, well, we said it was going to be a Mount Sack Fullerton game, right? I was born three turnovers. You're lucky. The leprechaun from uh, Columbia. Third and seven. That's, That's right. a new one. I like that. You're I the like leprechaun that from Columbia, Ryan Osborne. I like that one. He drinks green beer. <laughs> Third down and a long seven. Big play for the Hornets. Nunez looks things over. Goes back. Two steps. Cross the middle. Touchdown, Hornets! And that's Gibson. The Big body of Will Gibson. And we talk about guys boxing out in basketball. That's exactly what Will Gibson did. One route receiver, Brandon Nunez, took his time and knew where he was going. He saw the look. If he didn't see Gibson box out, he was running. So he sees him box out, a dart on the number nine. So the Hornets convert on the turnover. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. And the Hornets come out with 10 quick points. Three tie it, seven put them in front here in the third quarter on Sportsnet, USA.net. And they needed to do that because Mount Sac is the favorite here. They're the team that lost by two to Riverside, and that was an outstanding game 
by basically the best two teams in the state all season long. Now Fullerton has been lurking all season long. We were okay, we're okay, we're okay, we're getting better. And now they're here in the semifinals and Mount Sac is sure to react as they bring back Lucas Moore Mount and Jaden Allen back deep. Lucas Moore and Jaden Allen. So the Hornets get 10 quickly. Moore goes to the far side of the field. Allen to the near side of the field. The Mounties going from left to right in their white jerseys. Allen takes it at the 10. Looks to find a gap. Goes up the middle, gets hit at the 30, gets taken down. And again, that's Anthony Wilson who makes the stop. Jordan Little didn't like something. As Garrett Campbell comes over, says, come on now, you got to do a little bit better. You know, guys, on uh, Thursday, we were out with the fam and met a youngster who could have taken the 145 class. Of course, Jamison is 10 years old, but he would have been the star. May have been the star. We had a good conversation about football, place for the Henderson Cowboys out in Vegas. Rawls comes to the near side of the field. He's a burner. We'll see if they go deep on the first play. They hand it off to the big guy. Gets tripped up in the backfield and then gets drugged down quickly. You guys, Tyler Carter was a guy who tripped him up in the backfield and he really hasn't got Tyler a head Carter of steam on him yet. Gain of one on the play. Udengwu, quarterback in there. Throwing the ball well. CV goes deep, fakes it to the big man. Muhammad goes deep. He does. He gives it to Muhammad, fakes it to Muhammad. Tackle there. Ball comes out. That's Fullerton. Down the sideline. Touchdown, Hornets. Oh, my goodness. Ball was out. It was a fumble. I, you know what, guys? It looked like he was down to me, but I didn't, I thought, I didn't see the ball come out. I also ball thought came, he was no, down. No, ball came out when he was coming downwards. Before he hit the ground, he lost the ball. Hey, big So play. the ball did not cause the, the ground did not cause the fumble. Now they're going to discuss it, Corey, because I'm sure the other officials went, but nobody called it, and the official nearer the did official, not. The official on the near side throws the beanbag to signify that the ball was loose yeah, right. on the near side. So that was the call from the near side. Right on top right of the Right on play. top of where the football was. So Fullerton, that was Jeremy McNeely who had to scoop and score. Is the runner lost possession of the ball before he was down? Brilliant fields the touchdown. So Jeremiah McNeely's score stands. And that's his first touchdown. Very opportunistic defense. This might be the this is the most turnovers they've had in a game this year. Hornets going for two. Oh. You know, you like the guts by Garrett Campbell, but you know, you want to ride this momentum. That's why he's going for two. But I like the feel. I like the extra point. Me too. Struggle, 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 struggle. In for two. And that's why Garrett is smarter than me and you and, uh, and Ryan because he goes for two and he says, I know my team. He rides that momentum for that two point conversion. And every time Garnett Davis III touches the ball in the last five games, he's done positive things. I mean, you go back to that Saddleback game. He had one touch in the first half and it went for nearly 40 yards. You take a look at each and every time he has the football, going all the way back to the Cerritos game as well. He has the football, good things happen. I want to go back to you talking about McNeely. That's a guy that we talked to Coach Brian Crooks about before the game started. It was all about McNeely. Where'd he come from? That was the statement that we heard from the sidelines before this game started. 
he was a guy that came into camp, doesn't look all too physically imposing as we've seen in years past from Fullerton linebackers. 5'11", 220. But the IQ, the football IQ, and the ability to get to gaps quickly is what the coaching staff said opened their eyes and made him a starter for Fullerton. So First let me be. Conference. So let me be the downer. I'm going to be Debbie Downer here. There's 8.21 to go in the third quarter. Oh, yeah. There's a fourth quarter to play. We, this game is far from being over. If you're a Fullerton College Mount Sack fan, kick deep, taking it the two. Mount Sack needs to get something. Thrown back. They don't give up on the play. The play's there. Get him down at the 16. But Corey Nalen, you've been around for too many of these games. You've been in the booth with me where you've taken off your headsets and said, I'm going home. We've seen way too many of these games where one team got way too high and the fans got way too high and the broadcasters got way too happy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I gotta check, you got to take off your headset and compose yourself because the game is not over. Yeah, because, you know, going to San Clemente would be the right thing to do if it ends up that way. Take us that long to quit complaining. Just I, no eclairs this time. I got I got one closer to here if that happens. All right. Udengu comes out. He says, I'm ready. We're going we going to just keep doing what we're doing. Hornets. Stop. Gain a two on the play. Chris Harmon, they're setting them up again. Yeah, Corey, they're waiting to go on that fly pattern one more here, time Isaiah and going Peterson, deep. Tackled by everybody. St. Julian out on this side of the field. Shamar Savage, who had the 78 yard pass, is out wide right. Person to person. They go to the other side of the field. Gotta make the initial tackle, they don't. First down, Mounties. Player down for the Hornets. Athletic trainers from both sides of the field run on the field with 7.37 to go. And that's Bryce Dunnick, who's a first-team all-conference. And he was my homer pick for the conference play defensive player of the year. Scott Giles comes by, pacing back and forth. Scott's smiling right now. Scott's, Scott's been involved in too many of these games too, Corey Nalen. Tyler Carter comes in for Bryce. First down and 10 for the Mounties, right at the 29. They throw it over in the flat. Nice pass, the lead, the receiver. He steps out immediately when he catches it. And that's actually Terrence Get Hansbro who comes in for Bryce Dunning. And that's why Jordan Allen is one of the best wide receivers in the state. He went up for it just to make the catch. Was impressive. Allen stays in the near side, far side of the field. Second down and 10 at the 28. Bump and run in the slot. Caden, look out for him. He's a speed burner. They're putting the defensive backs on an island. Big second down and 10. Here comes the pressure. Dangwu goes up. Incomplete pass flag on the play. They're going to get hands on Kadari Kearns, even though, yeah, he put a hand on him, but the receiver was slipping and tripped on his break. So it's going to be an automatic first down. Kid out of Bishop of Montmark. Shifty like a guy from the 90s in Dalen McCutchey. Tyler Vaughn's not as lanky. Also went to Bishop of Mont doing some good things. St. Julian comes to the near side of the field in the slot. Kate Tatum. Number 25. 10-yard penalty. Automatic. First down and 10 for the Mounties. Right at the 39. Ike Udengwu, the third at quarterback, had a good game tonight for this Mountie football team. He can throw the football, no doubt about it. Brian Crooks going with four down linemen. Let's see if they can get to him. Udengwu has time. Steps up, rolls the outside. Going across the middle of the field. Nice comeback route for a first down. And... Corey, when you look at what's going on out there and the Mountie fans are booing on that side of the field, I think the head linesman showed great restraint from not throwing the flag. He reached for his flag because both players were battling. 
and on the play, Savage nice. threw a punch. Kearns was there as well, holding nice. on out of bounds. Tyler Carter now in for Hansborough. They go back again to that side. Off the player, run him out of bounds. That's Lucas Moore. And Mount Sack is going to have to be careful with these out routes. We've seen Fullerton break on these and have pick six. On Lucas the Moore flip side, Fullerton's going to have to worry about the up receive, inside receiver going deep on those. Lucas Moore stays out there. They run it, and Daegu fakes it, keeps it himself, gets knocked down, carrying the ball like a loaf of bread, gets up, gets upset with the official, but hey, you're running back. When you take it, you're gonna take your shots, first down and 10. And the Mounties are reacting the way we thought the Mounties would react. Udengu brings them back out. First down and 10. Rawls to the far side of the field. St. Julian to the near side of the field. First down and 10 at the 32. They go back, Udengu floats it up. Incomplete pass. And there it was. And you know, Corey, it's interesting you mentioned Fullerton College defensive backs jumping those routes because on that same play that you were talking about, Salen Streeter actually jumped that route. However, it goes just past his fingertip. If he gets the hand on it, it's either deflected or he's to the house. So exactly what you were talking about takes place on that play just a step behind. Run it straight off right tackle. Nice run play. First down, Mounties down at the 20. And Isaiah Dickerson there off tackle. Mount and this is a drive Isaiah Mount Dickerson. Sack needed. They had to have this type of drive, and they have to result, it has to result in some type of points. St. Julian to the near side of the field. Savage to the far side of the field. Katum in the slot next to him. Dickerson the running back. First down and 10 at the 22. Quarterback, keeper, touchdown, Mount Sack. And the Fullerton defense, they came with the Fullerton twist the and game. lost sight of Ike Udengu the third. And that's what they needed to get back and sort of quell this Hornet momentum. Outstanding play by Ike. And again, he did it with his legs. He had an arm, short passes but they set them up on those short passes and the read option to get through that and score six. Ball is spot, a kick is up, and the kick is good. You go back to that cutback there by Udengu. He full sells that he's going to the outside. Takes his body positioning that way as well. And all it takes is just him planting his one foot, taking a look upfield and realizing what he has option-wise. Because you saw it, Corey. He goes towards that outside, and they've got two blockers on that far side. So Fullerton's defense expects it to go to that outside with the help. And as soon as he cuts it back to the inside, it's daylight. Problem is, the Fullerton defense was thinking. That's the problem. They weren't working with the assignment of what they were supposed to be doing and filling that gap on the twist. So they read the running back, which hasn't had that much. They're just picking up five and six yards, which has been good enough to force their, their linemen to commit, but a better play, better job of ball handling by Ike. Stewart back deep along with Jordan Smith. Hornets up by eight with 444 to go in the third quarter. 32 to 24 here on SportsNetUSA.net. Taken there by Smith. Looking to come up the middle. Stays on his feet. Gets up to about the 30. They're going to mark him down at the 29. So, guys, another score alert. 21-21 in the third quarter between Cerritos and LBCC. So, the Hornets up by eight with four 38 to go, and now, Corey, it's just score for score matching. And American River up north, Mark, beats Laney, so next week is going to be American River versus San Mateo. Brandon Nunez back in at quarterback. 
Throw it over to the flat, in the hands, dropped again by a wide open receiver. Garnett Davis the third. you have to make that catch because you split your blockers and you might be running for days. C.J. Broy comes in the game. And that might be more of a letdown than you can um, really realize because it took the air out of the crowd. It took the air out of your team. So let's see what they do here on second and third downs. Yeah, because if you come back up, make a big play, you're still up by eight. You're not from behind. Run it straight up the middle, down after a gain of two on the play. And submarining on the inside was Emmanuel Woka. And if you're the Mounties and you quickly get back in the game as much as all the momentum was going in gray and blue, all of a sudden now the Mounties said, hey, the game is ours. Yeah, you just got to ride that wave. We're in the fourth quarter, excuse me, third quarter. So third quarter, you still got one more to go. Nunez, big third down and nine. Mounties making noise. They're going to bring the heat. Nunez goes back, has a chance to throw, not even close, incomplete pass. And so it's three and out. So again, the pressure gets to Nunez, he rushed it. So with that rush, he didn't allow Jordan Smith to actually get on, get complete his break and into the route. Because if he waits just a little bit longer, Smith gets a step, but the pressure up front causes the early throw. So Allen steps up. He's going to stand at about at the 35-yard line, looks over the sidelines. Low throw. Off the side of the foot. Allen signals for a fair catch and gets it right at the 40. Great field position for the Mounties, trailing by eight with 3.45 to go. And if you're a Hornet fan like Ryan Osborne, not at the other end, now, Ryan Osborne, the worst of your nightmares are about to start because the Mounties are going to be dead even going into the fourth quarter against this Hornet team. But I want to take a look at the other side for the Mounties. You have an exceptional star at quarterback who is guiding you down the field. You give this football into his hands and allow him to make plays to get you into this game. Big Ike back there once again. Ike keeps it himself, comes around. Gets hit, makes a gain of nine on the play. And they found what works. And this looks like Fullerton's defense in the first four games of the season where they were finding themselves and not playing assignment football. Mohammed running back. Udengwu at quarterback. Starting to carve up the Hornet defense. Second down and one at the 49 for the Mounties. He goes back, looking to go deep. He's got a man all alone. Touchdown, Mounties. And again, that is Shamar Savage. Savage on the outside out of Long Beach, 6'4", 210, but with burners on the outside. And again, that's what they do. Big plays. They'll nickel and dime you, but that big play is always going to be there. How many yards did uh, Ike have in the first half thrown? 179. He go throw for 400 tonight. Yeah, he may throw for 400. The Mounties decide, hey, it's early. We'll take the field goal. Ball is spotted. Kick is up. And the kick is good. With 3.01 to go. It's the Hornets 32. The Mounties 31 here on Sportsnet USA.net. Somebody tell me community college football ain't good. I dare, I dare you. 17 to 14 at half, 32-31. With three minutes remaining still in the third quarter. As high as Fullerton was at the eight-minute mark, it's eight, it's three-minute mark. They're just as low. And the Mount Sac side, as low as they were at the eight-minute mark, they're as high as Fullerton was at the three-minute mark. I want to go back to that throw. You look at Ike 
What makes that throw special is the fact that he lays it out there, trusts his arm, and says, I'm going to put enough pace on it and let my receiver get there. He trusts his receivers. Big kick. Taken at the two. Going up the middle, staying on your feet, getting out to the 25. The Hornets have yet to have that outstanding special team return that you just think might turn the game around. And the outside of Mount Sack is, you know, they're they're winning the outside against the Fullerton defenders of backs right now. We haven't we haven't said that all season. After the well, after the Cerritos game, we haven't said oh, that. But Mount Sack, there's a reason why they're points. here. Josh Calvin comes back in at cornerback. Tellery Green comes in at running back. No? I think that's Malik. Oh no, you're right. Josh Calvin takes around corner. Dana, was I right? Yeah, you were right. Okay. Corey Nalen said, no, you got the wrong guy and a running back, so I stopped for a second. Gain of 10 in the play, first down on the legs of Josh Calvin. Now, Mark, I'm going to ask you, is this a drive that Fullerton needs to score? I, I really do believe it. I think Fullerton needs to score here. If they don't score here, I think the Hornets are in trouble. You've got to squell the momentum. Josh Calvin. Throws it over in the middle. No flag on the play. Calvin's pass intended for Jordan Smith. Broken up by Malone Wells. Incomplete pass. Well, I'm going to say good D by Wells because he didn't get the flag called on him. But he had a left arm around the hip. That's just good D. Now, if you give Calvin time, here's where you run that little sluggo. Second down and 10 at the 35. Green in at running back. Josh Calvin, not many yards. They hand it to Green, goes up the middle, gain of two. And that's Woka again. So the Mountie defense, they're feeling it. Number Green with a three yard run, tackled by Emmanuel. Now and the Woka. Hornets have put themselves in tough defensive, offensive <laughs> positions tonight. Third downs with seven and eight against a very stout Mountie defense. Big third down. Josh Calvin pump fakes, has time, goes deep right there on the money to Smith, and Jordan Smith hauls it in. And what they do, you fake it out, and then you go out. Lance Russell was late as the safety coming over. Wells bit just a little bit. Jordan Smith's good game is finally stopped by Maloa Wells. They hand it off to Tyrell Green Jr. Goes off a right tackle, goes down after a gain of three on the play. So Josh Campbell in at quarterback. Smith to the near side of the field. Koenig in the game with C.J. Broy and Gibson go to the far side of the field. Gain of four they give him. It's going to be a second down and six. Campbell looks over and gets the signal. Tyrell Green Jr. in the backfield. Calvin to Smith, 41 yard pickup. Josh Calvin at quarterback. Josh Calvin goes back, has time, feels pressure, throws it away, pick! Why? Josh Calvin, he was double team, was Aiden Koenig. You have to know where you are. That's, is that Lance Russell's second pick of the game? Yeah. Yes, it is. You have to know the situation that you're in. If you're rolling and you see those two players, you can't make that throw. You, it was first and 10, second and six. I'm sorry, second and six. So you have to get as much yardage as you can running around the corner. Interception. And with Touchdown. that, Bulls you have a third down, line. and what First is it, ten, four or five seven. if you get a two if you get two yards. But you cannot make that throw. 43 seconds to go. Big pick. The Hornets had a chance and throw it away. Run it straight up the middle. Gain of two. They let it keep going. And this is when a player gets hurt, Corey. 
the officials let it go way too long. And I'm sorry, I don't care what level you're at. This is where somebody gets upset because they're getting dragged at and pulled at. And then you throw a flag on somebody that can rightfully on either side of the ball be disturbed by how they get treated. Corey Wilk Gibson came off the field upset. Nobody was covering him at all. Here, here's the thing, it's a one look and you have to go. So we come to the end of the third quarter and guys, the race is on. The Hornets 32, the Mounties 31 here on Sportsnet USA.net. Before I move on, you know the thing that's funny? Ryan Osborne said, no matter what, I'm not going to be disturbed during this game. Not true. Corey Nalen says, just as long as it's a good game, doesn't matter. Not true. And guys, I'm the old guy that I'll look and say, look, Corey, give me that weird look. Like, I didn't say that. Well, you had the Hornets winning this game. Well, we'll wait. You got fourth quarter, 32-31. But here's the thing. In that situation, Will Gibson, that, well, was open. He was wide open. But again, in that situation, Fullerton has been pretty smart offensively all game long. So you have to make that one read. And if nothing is there, and that's a problem that's plagued Josh all season, if nothing is there, you have to run no matter what. Don't throw it up. Just run and get that third down because jo Jonathan Fulbert has been good with his leg, had one block earlier. But you have to give your offense time the defense, let's see if they can react, because Mount Sack is going to try to put, him on, put it on him right here. Hornets come up, a little motion out in the flat to Dickerson. He moved a little early, no flag against him. Corey, I saw him take two steps forward before the play started, and there was no flag by the official. No, Dickerson and Daniel Gonzalez moved before the snap. Gain of eight on the play, third down and a long two. Dickerson stays in at running back. Julian comes to the near side of the field. Big third down play for Brian Crooks' defense in this game. Quarterback keeper straight up the middle, goes the outside, first down, Mount Sack. And that's been, been their big play in the third quarter. It was Udangwa running the ball, getting to the outside, and that's a big play. Big play. So Udangwa at quarterback, Dickerson at running back. Julian, near side of the field, in the slot next to him is Kadam. Straight up the middle, hands off to Dickerson, gain of three on the play. Hornets up by one. We're in the fourth quarter. It has been back and forth all night long. And Mark, you mentioned Cade Kadem. He has 24 receptions. He's his team's second leading receiver. Watch it, on the far side of the field, Corey. Well, Shamar there. Savage has been the gunner for him all night. Yeah, and he's been their big play receiver. He's been hurt a few games. So they just got him back tonight. Second down and seven. They go back, they go in the flat, thrown away, wide open on the play was Canyon St. Julian. It's thrown behind him, if it's thrown on him, it's a gain of six. Yeah. Canyon St. Julian, sales on a Third and seven. Xavier Rawls comes in near side of the field. Judith Nzawa, the tight end, will be right off the tackle's hip on the near side of the field. In the slot on the far side of the field, Cade Kadem. And then far on the outside is St. Julian. We'll see what happens. This is where the quarterback usually will pull it down. Here comes the pressure. He takes off running, goes the outside. First down, Mount Sack and more. And the second false start of the series, not called, because in motion, moving before the snap was Dickerson. And if you watch 
Mudingwa before the snap. Every time he's bending his knees and moving forward, that's the quarterback. But Dickerson is moving right before the snap of the ball. That's the second time this series. But again, nice job by the quarterback reading the situation, not forcing it and running for the first. First down and 10, Dickerson stays in at running back. That motion call should be by the white hat. He hasn't called anything. He really hasn't done it. Dickerson holds on to it, goes straight up the middle, cuts the outside, stays on his feet. Dickerson to the 35. The scrum comes, he goes down at the 33. Flags all over, they're gonna be against the horns. And we'll see, there was a lot of talking. Gonzalez was there, Harris was there. This is one where it's against both teams or you pick up the flag. Fullerton's gonna get called for this flag right here. Ant Harris wants somebody, he's down on the ground. There is no foul on the play. First down. Which is an advantage to Mount Sac anyway. The play stands. Oh, it's a first down, yeah. The play stands. Well, I mean, if you get a foul on both teams, if they both get called and they're not dead ball fouls, the play is played over again. Yeah. No, that would have been a dead ball foul because they were both down. Then they threw the flag. Let's hope Harris is okay. Ant on the season. I didn't see him. He didn't make any conference team, but Dunnick and Harris rivaled anything that any other team had on the inside on defense. And actually, that's Terrence Hansborough. Excuse me. Terrence at 6'2", 295 out of Collierville High School in Tennessee. He's walking off slowly, but again, under his own power. Ludangwu had four attempts rushing for 31 yards in the first half. He's tripled that easily here in the second half. 12, 12 to go, but your Hornets are still up by one. First and 10 at the 35 with 12 minutes to go. A big interception by Josh Calvin, throwing it into double coverage in the end zone. First down and 10. Dengu goes back, has time to throw, gets hit. Middle of the field, incomplete pass. And Dengu goes down, gets back up. First time pressure has really been put on him when he's throwing the football. Yeah, and they're gonna need to do that because Fullerton has dropped back into a zone. So they're gonna need to put the pressure on Dengu. Because if he sits back there all night, these talented receivers are gonna pick him apart. Rawls in the near side of the field, Cade Kadem goes with him. Good crowd tonight. Shamar Savage on the far side of the field. The Dengu looks things over. Second down and 10. We got a whistle on the play and it's gonna be motion again, Bullstar, Corey. Number 36 offense, repeat second down. Again, Corey, up here, They've been taking off or leaning forward before the whistle, before the snap. And the white hat has let a few go. Finally, that one, when it's a big guy, you, you know what? That's like somebody stealing the whole loaf of bread, Ryan Osborne, <laughs> instead of just a slice. Second down and 15 at the 40. They move it back a little. The defense needs to find a stop with 11.38 to go. Dengu goes back, throws the opposite side, gets it to the big man. Moe's got it, stutter steps. Oh, he can move down the field. Excellent play call. Get everybody moving in the direction to the left side of the offense, and you run those pulling guard and tackle on the outside to set up that screen. Now and Neyanga Makunga. So it takes it all the way down to the 15, first and 10. And this is where Mukanga does his job, Mark, in the fourth quarter against defenses. Everybody's sort of tired. Stays in the backfield. 
Mounties handed off to the big man. He was down. And the official finally blows the whistle, and that's the other thing. These officials, Corey, and a lot of things are letting plays last a little longer than I've seen other officials do. I like the way you smile at me. Man is down, you should blow the whistle. Tyler Carter was there, played the mole, and dug that hole so he couldn't get out. Loss of two. 10-32. And that's four and a half tackles for loss for Carter this season. What are there now in this between the two teams? Six turnovers in this game? I know three for at least the Hornets. Dengu goes back, middle of the field, throws it there. Oh, picked! Pick and a touchdown, and it's dropped. There was nobody in front of him. Christian Cross. <laughs> So very simply, he picks up his head and says, oh, look, there's daylight. There's no one. But as he picks up his head and takes a look upfield, doesn't secure the football first. And like you said, Mark, if he gets that football and sees it into his arms, that is six. Third down and 12. That's a ball game miss right there. We'll see. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Dengu goes back, feels the pressure, rolls out, rolls out, throws the middle of the field, incomplete. So they'll attempt a field goal to take the lead by two. So they have one of the best kickers in the state, in Diego Escueda. Escueda, 11 of 15 make it 12 of 16 after a field goal earlier tonight. Mark it at the 25, you add 10, a 35 yard attempt. Kick is up, it's good. So with 10 minutes to go, it's a two point ball game. Ryan Osborne, let's go back to the almost. Because you just said to me, if he's watching for the football and catches it, there's nobody there to stop it. No, there was absolutely no one. It goes off the hands of the receiver and it's into his arms. But there's two different things that go into that factor into that. First, he was looking upfield, but second, we talked about it, the condensation that is building here at Labard Stadium. Now, when we mention condensation, it's hard for you to see on the screen that there's a little bit of fog picking up and also that marine layer that's dropping in. From the roof here in the press box, we are starting to see water and condensation drip down because there is condensation. Now, it's not often, but we are seeing it, and the surfaces down there are slick. The ball is harder to be able to reel in, so if it goes off the hands, it's a lot tougher. So what you're saying is... I'm giving him credit. All right, what you're saying, I think the ball may be a little slick. Corey Neal is saying, man, catch the football. Mounties by two. Punch kick, straight down. Takes a bounce, goes in the end zone for a touchback. First down and 10 for the Hornets, trailing by two. It is the drive of the game. Here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ike Dengu, 18 for 30, 309 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. 93 yards on the ground with the rushing touchdown. Uh, Shamar Savage, three receptions, 145 yards, two touchdowns. Randy Moss numbers. Josh Calvin in at quarterback. Guys, do you feel that... That's essentially a nine-point swing for Fullerton. You, the touchdown you don't get, plus the three that go on the board for the Mountie. Yeah. Here they come. Josh Calvin rolls away. Pump fakes. Flag. Calvin throws it. Incomplete pass. Holding against the Hornets. And that's going to be the first holding call, I believe, on the Hornets tonight. Calvin, 4 of 12, 95 yards. Nunez, 7 of 15, 94. Both have a pick. Tyrell Green Jr. has 16 carries for 89 yards, guys. He's due to break one. If 
Play the illegal formation by the offense. One of four players in the backfield. Fire penalty, replay first down. See, I decline that penalty. Why would I take the five yards? I decline it. Which you could have if you were the Mounties. They don't, they take the five yards. First down and 15 at the 20. They hand it off the middle. Tyrell Green struggles his way out to the 33. And with a 12 yard gain, guys, he's now over 100 yards rushing. Tyrell Green up the middle, carrying tacklers. Darius Second down and two. Green they jump, the that should have been a flag. No contact, got back. Tyrell Green stays on his feet. First down. They give him the 35. Moves the chains. First down and 10. Nine minute mark. Boy, and this is a game where you don't want to be up by three with <laughs> two minutes left. Yeah, it is. You want to be up in this game. You want to be ahead in this game because both these offenses can he score. Can up, and we've seen that both power. these offenses can score on one play drive. 35-21 in the fourth quarter, Cerritos over LBCC. You want to be ahead in this ball game because you believe your defense can win it for you. <laughs> well, you say you don't want to be up by three. My defense gonna win this for me? They're gonna have to. Either team. Malik Winston comes in at running back. First down and 10 at the 35 for the Hornets. Gibson goes in motion. They throw to Malik Winston in the flat. Stays on his feet, gets to the 40. Where are they gonna mark him out at? Right at the 40? Generous mark. Gain of five on the play. And I like that play because you say you run the same play, but where's your tight end in the middle? Gibson needs to drag that safety out. Run a little delay back to the 40. Third down and five at the 40. And they just crushed on the inside. Supreme knot. And that was also ease. Gibson goes to the far side of the field. Smith comes the near side of the field. Malik Winston stays in at running back. Third down and five at the 40. The Hornets need to find something the way the Mounties are playing now. Here they come. Josh Calvin throws it, caught at the 48. Wow, Smith goes down, down and gets it. Nice catch, nice throw, only to where his receiver can catch it. 7.40 to go. Josh Calvin at quarterback. Runs it straight up the middle, dive forward. Gain up to the 45, gain of seven on the play. And I'm going to start calling Caden uh, Supernat. Instead of his Malik last Winston. name. Malik Winston stays in the backfield. Second, Second and three at the 40. Malik Winston stays on his feet. Gain of two. Let's see where they mark it. He's just short. Out at the 43. 6.57 to go. Tick, tick, tick. Malik Winston stays in at running back. Josh Calvin. Third down. Give it to Josh Calvin, they shove him. Should be a first down, they give him a first down. Don't get a flag. And that's Will Ferroni in there. He's the one you gotta be careful for. And here's a play where if you're gonna keep running that ball in between the tackles, you gotta tell your offensive line here, we need one block to spring our guy. 
So first and 10 at the 42. Gibson goes to the far side of the field. Smith stays at the near side of the field. Malik Winston at running back. Josh Calvin at quarterback. First down and 10 at the 43, 6.20 to go, trailing by two. They come after Josh Calvin. They get the block across the middle of the field. Off the hand flag right there. Corey Nealon, you saw the grab. Yeah, Wells had to grab him, and Will Gibson needs to come on. But he had to grab him because that would have been a touchdown on a, per, on a good pass. So that's good defense by Wells. You don't, you don't mind that. Even though it's a first down, you don't mind that because it doesn't, it prevents a touchdown. They're going to pick it up. They're going to pick it up. No, they can't pick it up because it was a catchable pass. We have defensive holding before the pass. Ten yard penalty, automatic first down. So it wasn't pass interference, they called it defensive holding. The yard line. Takes First it down to, to the 31. Six minutes to go. They run it straight off a tackle, gain of three. And the quickness of the Mounties is impressive because Fullerton is that one block away for springing either Winston or Green, Jr. But their defense reacts so well to the ball. Even if you miss, if you miss that block, it's over. But even if you make that block, they swarm to the ball. Second down and a long six for the Hornets right at the 28. Josh Calvin goes back, he's got time. He decides to take off running and he runs right into a defender for a loss of eight Calvin on the sack. play. Keanu Mailoto. And again, one. You gotta make that one read and take off. Again, good secondary coverage. That's a covered sack by the Mounties. So it's third down and 10. Tyrell Green, it's gonna be fourth down and it's gonna be first down. That's a first. Knocked down by Mountie, Kate, Supernat. So Supernat, Supernatural, the freestyle MC back in the 90s, no? Okay. Makes the tackle. I'll just listen to you two talk. <laughs> so they come and knock the center down. That'll be offsides on the defense. Uh, in the terms of an old basketball coach, Mark Dewey said, her, Do you, you think? So we're at 4.35. Corey Nealon, Ryan Osborne, and the old nervous guy up here. <laughs> in the beat up car, trying to get home. Run it up the middle, down at the 16. The Mounties 34, the Hornets 32. That has it been a long, methodical drive. It's like watching me walk up the stairs at any of these stadiums. Is he gonna make it or is he not? Josh Calvin looks things over. Second down and four, they're coming up. Josh Calvin, once again, takes it himself. Josh Calvin, touchdown Hornets! And they're gonna go for two. Because it'll make it a six point game. And that way if Mount Sack does happen to score a touchdown, they'd have to get that extra point. But again, Josh Calvin 
read it correctly, read that blitz, kept it in the belly. No, nope, let's take it out and get around the corner. That's the same way Aiku Dengel scored in the third. Calvin gets the block, throws a far side, caught, touchdown. Give it to him. No, no, he was out. He's out. So yeah. it's the Hornets 38, the Mounties 34 with 348 to go. And Calvin missed Koenig at the pylon. He had him open. All he needs to do is make that throw and it's a two-point conversion. He waited for the deep receiver. Was that Will Gibson? That was Gibson. He waited for Will to come through and just couldn't get that toe tap. So Ryan Osborne, if I told you the Hornets were gonna score 38, would you think they would have won the game? If you had told me that before the game, yes. Absolutely. Corey Nealon? No. I, you know, there was no score you could have told me to say could the Hornets win the game. That's because you could have said that to Mount Sac, and I would have said, no, this was a different feeling coming into this one. There was no score until you told me at the end of this game that I would actually believe it would happen. Need a good kickoff. Down the middle of the field. It's going to be short. Taken at the 12. Cut to the outside. Struggle from behind. So the Mounties have three 41, they need a touchdown. And here's what every Mountie is thinking, every Mountie fan is thinking. Methodical. No, they're thinking, no problem. Big man, big man, big man, big man. I got two of them in the booth with me. Two big men. I'd hand you two the ball and say there's a donut right there. Go get it. First out of 10 from the Mounties. This is what they wanted. Dagwe goes back on the pass, and the ball hawks are out. Gain of three on the play, 331. Sorry, Mark, they're going to try to set that up again. They've had the big plays off of short routes. Those first two plays, Short, short, then you got deep. Rawls and Moore to the near side of the field. They go back, they go to this side of the field. Miss tackle. First down, Mounties. We're at the three minute mark. Mounties not rushing. Rawls to the near side of the field. The danger man, Savage, the far side of the field. First and 10. Dengu goes back, middle of his field, right on the money, put a pretty play to Lucas Moore. And what it was is, Mark, it's a seam drag route. You see drag routes running across the field. This time, it was through the seam as Kadem leads the way, Moore on the return, on the back. Dengu, over 400 yards in this game. Motion again, give it to Mo. Mo jumps over. Big man refuses to go down all the way to the 22. And here's the thing, they have, they missed the false start one more time. Yeah, it was an obvious false start. And that is Ant Harris who's down. So Terrence Hansbro earlier, now Ant Harris, the interior line goes down. And like we just said, 341 to play, Mount Sack, nobody on the Mount Sack sideline was saying, oh no, we're down by four. They said, we don't care. We'll just come back down and score and put the ball game away. You need a touchdown here. Fullerton's defense, those pick sixes haven't been there on the outside. You're really going to have to be careful and watch those secondary moves. 2.27 to go. Corey Nalen, Ryan Osborne. Well, guys, you wanted it exciting. You wanted to get as old as me? This game will do it to you here on SportsNetUSA.net. The quarterback for Mount Sac has been exemplary tonight. I tell you what, guys, I looked at his numbers and thought, is he really as good as his numbers show it off to be? I think that proves tonight. He's an excellent quarterback and will be good at the next level. Sophomore, Adam Workman, as we've said. 6'3", 195 pounds. 
Eichendengu comes back out. First and 10 at the 22. The Hornets need that pick, that turnover. The Dengu come back, here comes the pressure. Ike throws it up for a touchdown. There was a push and no call. There's a flag down, but it should go against Jamar Savage. They're not gonna call offensive pass interference, but they should with the push. The pass caught by Jamar Savage. Flag on the field. That was two hands in the back. Yeah, it was, it really was. I mean, you could see it from up here. We don't have the instant replay to show it to you. Cause Sias was there on the outside. He was with him. He didn't have hands on him. So his hands were up. As he was moving and turning towards the ball, Savage pushes him from behind and away. And that's what the call should be. They're not going to call it because Mount Sack is dancing. They're picking up the flag, Corey. Part of the pass, we have defensive holding. That's that horrible. Holding That's line. horrible. I'm sorry. Rizzo plays a touchdown. That's a bad call. But again, you go for the big play, you make the defense work, and that's what happens. When you force things to happen, things go your way. Kick is up, and the kick is good. There is two minutes left in the game. And this is where going for two. Now may come back to hurt you because if you get that extra point, it's 41-39, and then you can win with the field goal. But the way Fullerton has been playing, they've been shown, they've known this game that they can have the big play. Problem is, Mount Sac has matched them step for step, and we've seen it just here. Mount Sac's defense is going to have to play the best they have on this drive. So the Hornets will get the ball one last time with two minutes to go. Trailing by three. Here, here, here's, here's where Mark, the glass is half full. He's been calling for a kickoff return all season. You're right, baby. You just read my mind. Man. I'll take I'll take that 80 yard return right now. You know what? I'll take it down to the five. No, I wouldn't know. You want it all. The I way. want it all the way. Yeah, this is a fun game, guys. It has been. It's been an excellent game by both teams. Little pooch taken at the 10. Turns the corner at the 30. Stays on his feet. Gets driven out of bounds at the 32. Michael Love, the return man. Push on and let's see if the Mountie defense can stop them one more time. I mean, they played a heck of a game, Fullerton's offense. Now we see what that two-minute drill's been working with all season long. Let's see if points come to fruition. Riverside won earlier today. Brandon Nunez in at quarterback. Malik Winston at running back. First down and 10 for the Hornets at the 30. Nunez goes back, throws it, taken right there at the 35. That's where they should mark it. Clock continues to roll. Brandon Nunez pass caught by CJ Brooke. Second down and six. For the right Hornets, Nunez stays in. Nunez, straight up the middle. The middle stuffs the Hornets. They're giving a generous spot up to the 37 timeout Hornets. 120 to go, Ryan Osborne. You talk about big, big plays for both these squads. Christian Cross interception that was dropped. There's three points right there. And that's the, that's the difference here. But he's had a heck of a game, though, on the outside when he's been in the ball game. Mount Sack on the flip side. Ike Udengwu 
when you need a touchdown in that third quarter to stop all the momentum, he picks it up. And uh, Corey, let's go back to the one play where Josh Calvin throws the interception. It was down at the 20. The score right now, let's assume Full Bear could kick the field goal. The score would now be tied at 41 all with the Hornets having the football. Yeah, both teams had opportunities to make plays. Both teams have missed plays as well. This has just been an outstanding football game. Third down and four for the Hornets at the 36. 120 to go. Here comes the pressure. Nunez, middle of the field. Gibson holds on to across the field. 114 to go. So the clock stops while they reset. It should have, the clock should have stopped for a first down. Clock is supposed to stop on a first down till they set the ball. Starts it right away? Cool. Does he? Okay, thank you. We've got the official timer down there, so he's correcting us. Thank you. So seven seconds go off. 106 to play, and that was a nice, calm throw by Nunez. So they're at the 48. Guys, I've got to ask you, longest field goal by full bear this season? 44. So you've got to get it down to the minimum 30-yard line. No, you need to score a touchdown. I agree. You cannot afford to just... You have to score a touchdown. Corey Nealon, Ryan Osborne, both saying crowds are on their feet. Nunez at quarterback, first and 10 at the 49. He goes back. He has time. He's going to take off running. Nunez stays on his feet. Down to the 30. Down to the 26. They stop it quickly. First down. 56 seconds to go. Nunez has time. Middle of the field. Down to the one. Timeout Hornets. No timeout. Hornets taking their time. Quarterback sneak. Nunez. Touchdown. Touchdown, Hornets! <laughs> With 27 seconds to go, the Hornets have come across. Guys, I'll tell you what, if we'd have known our season was going to end in a game like this. <laughs> How much fun has this game been it's, back it's, and forth? This has been a ball. I haven't had this much fun in a broadcast and watching a game since, it might be since 2017 in Sacramento. Oh, I tell you. No, I'm I watching, agree with you, Corey. <laughs> I'm watching Ryan Osborne <laughs> shaking over there while he's doing both cameras. This is an important extra point. Ball is spotted. Kick is up. It's good. Mount Sack needs a touchdown to win. Now here's the thing, fellas. We have seen Mount Sack. <laughs> yeah, I know. Pull off some outstanding finishes over the years. Hey, Ryan, I got some gaffer tape here. You want to help me wrap up, Mr. Nailing? Now, if anybody out there watching thinks this game is over. Oh, baby. Not even close. Not even even close with 27 seconds left and two timeouts that's an eternity for this team guys can you realize we saw the riverside game it looked like ventura was going to win that they put almost 75 points at ryan was it close to 75 points in their game yeah, it, it was. It was 40, over. It was 40, I believe it's over. Forty-seven yeah. to thirty-two was the final. Actually. Okay, so seventy-seven, and we've got eighty-six in this game. If somebody had told me in these two games, get at eighty-six and seventy-seven, the Hornets need to play defense for twenty-seven seconds. Big kick. 
Down the middle of the field. Fair catch signal for at the 10. Fair catch wave for Jaden Allen. So they get it at the 25. The 27 seconds left. They get it at the 10 where they signal for the fair catch. I no. They got the 25. No. Yeah. They do? If I'm not mistaken, it should go to the 25 because the fair catch is inside the 25. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so. 75 yards to win the game. They have two timeouts. Rawls to the near side of the field. Udenglu, that quarterback. Here he goes, has time, goes back, gets hit, throws it, out of bounds. Pitch and catch right on the money to Allen. This is why we say it's an eternity for Mount Sack. That only takes five seconds off the clock and it picks you up 14. Allen comes in near side of the field. Rawls outside of him. Far side of the field is Savage. Udengu says, let's bring it. They've got to get him for a sack, guys. Udengu goes back, has time. Jakes, he's going to go back. Goes out, pump fakes it, throws it up, taken. At the 42, 15 seconds to go. They're setting up for Hail Murray. Mur Hail, Hail Murray? Ma Hail Mary. <laughs> Hail Murray? <laughs> they need a Hail Mary and a Hail Murray. Dickerson, the running back. 15 seconds left. Rawls, the near side of the field. Savage, the far side of the field. Two plays, you think. Udenglu stands at the 50. Here they come, Udenglu. Gets taken down. He sacked at the 48. Timeout, Mount Sack. And that is it. That's Carlo Torres with the sack. 10 seconds to go in the game. Well, was that Carlo or Eric? 90 Who's and 98. It doesn't matter. One of them got the sack big Looks play. like 90. That, so that was Eric Hale, not Blake. Yeah, I'm gonna call him Eric Blake. <laughs> okay, people, 10 seconds to go. The Hornets up by four. Ryan, I'm shaking in my boots. Osborne, Corey, there's more gray on my hair than they've ever been nailing. And Mark, I'm pushing 100 years old right now, <laughs> Pavlovich. Up in the booth here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Guys. Well, I'm you wanted a Southern California championship, you two. I think we got one tonight. Mark, there's 10 seconds left. You just jinxed the whole game. You can't do that. Oh, sure. Blame me, Mr. Nailing. I'm just saying, with 10 seconds left, there anything Plenty of time. can happen. We've Plenty seen anything can happen. Shamar Savage is 6-3. He can use his height. Fullerton needs everything in front of them. Rawls mm -hmm. comes to the near yeah. side of the field. Now they, and here's the thing, LeBaron Kennedy Jr. extremely fast on the outside. 10 seconds, they go back. Udengu comes back, rolls, coverage is there. Udengu rolls out, goes to go back, out of bounds, incomplete pass. Two seconds, two seconds, two seconds, this is it. This is it. It's not Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen. Boy, howdy, you better make a tackle if it's not in the end zone. Corey's going down, getting his blood pressure cup. And like Corey was saying, they're going to take a timeout here for Mount Sac. Like Corey was saying, Mark, if you are a defensive back for Fullerton College, very simply, everything has to stay in front of you. You cannot allow for a singular Mount Sac Mountie to get behind you. It has to stay in front of you. And here's the other thing too, Mark, with only two seconds left, you've got to be careful with a lateral. So watch anybody who is coming nearby. Now I'm not saying that there's going to be a Statue of Liberty, but you're going to have to watch for something like that. 
because this is desperation time. If you are near the football, you have to make sure you wrap someone up and bring them to the ground. You cannot afford to be able to let someone pass your grass. And Ryan Osborne, let's put it one more way. If you ever make a tackle, a guy's in front of you, you better jump on his leg and hold on like it's a dog stealing your last piece of meat. Here's the other thing too, Mark. If you are in the backfield for Fullerton, as they're going to bring out Gibson in the all the way back near the 10 for some extra hands. But if you're a defensive back here, Mark, you cannot get called for a penalty because that leads to an untimed down and an extra opportunity for Mount Sac. So to the near side of the field is Rawls. Two seconds. Daegu goes back. He's got to take off running the right. He gets hit. Ball comes out. The Hornets win. The Hornets win. The Hornets pull off the victory over Mount Sac. The Fullerton College Hornets win 45 to 41 over Mount Sac on the last play of the game here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ryan Osborne, I don't think you and I have been this excited during a football game in a long time. And Corey Nalen went running down the steps. I think he was afraid he was going to start to cry up here if that victory didn't come about here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So the Hornets march down the field with two minutes to go. Nunez takes it in. Josh Calvin's out there. He does what he did. And this team comes back. And if somebody had said to me, 45-41, well, the Hornets are now one game away from playing in the state championship. And we'll be at the Riverside game, at least as fans, this coming Saturday. You'll see three Sportsnet guys standing <laughs> on the sideline having a great time as your Hornets pull off a big victory against Mount Sac today here at Labard Stadium on SportsnetUSA.net. Ryan, before we get up there, I got to tell you, I've been talking all night long. What, were, what are you feeling like right about now? You know what? The Hornet fan in me says elation, but the football fan in me says this was one of the oh, best man. games that we have seen in a long time. What and number game. one, what I want to give credit to the quarterback for Mount Sac. He very simply played spectacular, phenomenal, sensational football. And he led his football team to the best possible position to get a victory in this game. Now, if you're looking at it, Mark, that was a nearly historic performance from Ike. He single-handedly brought Mount Sack to within one score. He got them down the field. He got them into the end zone whenever they needed it. Huge credit to him and the Mount Sack offense. Can we go back to what I thought was probably the time of the game? And we all sort of looked at each other, and Corey said to the fans, don't get overexcited. But, Ryan, they come out to start that first half. Turnover, turnover, turnover. And they ended up getting 17 points in those, I, 14, 17 points in those turnovers. You look at the outcome right now. The start of that second half determined the outcome of this game. Mark, you and I were talking about it before this game started. It's the old cliche, whoever makes the fewest amount of mistakes is going to win the football game. We saw that come to life in this game because it was very simply, both of these two teams said, if we're going to win this football game, we're going to do it with a high-powered, explosive type of play. If we get picked, if we lose the football, oh well. But at least we're playing our style of football. We're playing to our strengths. Both of these two teams turned the ball over. You saw the mistakes happen, but they played the way that they had all season long. Well, I tell you what, it was a heck of a football game. Both these teams played their hearts out. Tell you what, if they worked as hard as us three did up here in the booth during this entire game on SportsNetUSA.net, they're going to sleep well this weekend. 
But for us guys, thank you to all the young men for making this one of the most exciting football seasons we've had in a long time. For you, myself, and Corey Nalen. Ryan, one last thoughts before we get off the air here. One thing that I'm going to be looking forward to is that Fullerton College defense taking on that Riverside offense next week. Yeah, we have the SoCal Championship coming up, and like you mentioned, the Hornets are one win away from playing for the state title. But, Mark, when you take a look at this Fullerton College football team from week one to where they are today, week one was all question marks. Training camp was all question marks. We didn't know what type of football team we had. And after week one playing Santa Ana, a lot of people, including on the sidelines, still didn't know what we had as a football team at Fullerton College. But now you look at today against Mount Sac, they have an identity, they have a strength, and they are going to the SoCal Championship. And I'll sum it up this way. The young man to my right went to Fullerton College. The other young man to my right went to Fullerton College. I went to Fullerton College. And three broadcasters that when you didn't hear something first were <laughs> given a shake with the body, yes. So let's sum it up to this for everybody who watched this game tonight. Once a Hornet, Always a Hornet as your Hornets come away with a victory and will play in the Southern California Championship next weekend. For Corey Nealon, Ryan Osborne, and the old guy, all we can say is your Hornets win by four, 45 to 41 over Mount Sac tonight on SportsnetUSA.net.